High School Sports Live TV, in partnership with ABC 27 News, is proud to present the Mid-Fed Girls Championship tonight at Milton Hershey High School in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Tonight's matchup features the Campville Lady Lions for the Capital Division, 18-4 against the Bishop McDevitt Crusaders, representing the Keystone Division, also 18-4. This broadcast is brought to you by our premier sponsors, the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency and Hoffman Ford. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gary Sutton. Alongside of me is Charlie Fortney and also Todd McCall. And we're ready for a good one tonight. Two teams that some people thought might not be in this game tonight are here with Bishop McDevitt and also Camp Hill. Charlie, let's start first of all with Bishop McDevitt. When you talk about Bishop McDevitt, you talk about balance. You talk about a young lady named Olivia Fasick, And you talk about a team that's very, very young who missed getting in here by a whisper last year. This year they're here coming out of a very tough division at 12 and 1. She's one of the most creative guards in the area. She's only a sophomore, so the future is bright when you have a skipper running the team that can not only score, but she can get a lot done. Average 11 a game, but but it does take senior leadership for every team. Joe Bressy and his staff are very happy with Noel Cameron. She's matching at 11 points a game. She brings an athleticism around the basket. Goes about 5'9". She's a PSAC dream. Millersville, Westchester, school like that, would love to have a girl like that. She's just hard to guard around the basket. She's very uncanny, athletic, can make a lot happen. Brianna Bresky, they st- other girls on this team, Treasure Morrow, they have a lot of girls that can make things happen. But ultimately, it's the coaching with Coach Bresky. He's been around a long time. And I'll tell you what, this guy has been, uh, every year you run into him, he says, we're going to be in that championship. Why didn't you put us on TV? Tonight I say, hey, Joe Bresky, you earned your right to be on TV. Coming here with a 12 and 2 division record, beat two other teams who were 11 and 3. Very tough division. On the Capital Division side, they say diamonds are a girl's best friend. Well, there's at least one diamond that's a girl's best friend at Camp Hill. Her name is Diamond Bragg. Well, Diamond Bragg, she came into the semifinal game against Cumberland Valley. She didn't. She didn't look at it as a, a Goliath David story. David being Goliath, she was the Goliath. One of the things I like about her is she can pull up from any direction. She penetrates well. What she's going to need to do tonight is understand that Coach Bressy and McDevitt are very, they do one thing. They like to put a press on at crucial times. She and the Camp Hill uh, Lions are going to have to break that press tonight. But I tell you what, if she gets in a rhythm and gets going 20-plus, she's tough to beat, and Camp Hill could be there tonight for a championship. But Diamond Bragg makes everything happen, so we'll see how she breaks that press tonight. But this is going to be an outstanding great game. Two equally matched teams tonight, Gary. Bishop McDevitt fought their way in here with a 51-47 double overtime victory over Greencastle. On the other side, as Todd mentioned, a 58-43. Some people will consider an upset win over Cumberland Valley. They had only lost once all season. So tonight, these two teams have battled themselves right in here for the Mid-Fed Championship, and it's coming your way here on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home. But don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. We help people realize their dreams of owning their own home. With features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. Look, Ryan. Shh. Look over there. I see it. I see it. Is that what I think it is? That's a beauty. Wait, wait. Look. There's an even bigger one. Oh, wow. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, man. Don't worry, buddy. I know where there's a whole herd of them. Hoffman has them. So be sure to stop by to save a lot of bucks. The Advanced Hoops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that.
Today's Advanced Hoops tip will feature Duke McKamey, our post-training expert. One of the key moves I teach young players is the drop step. It's important to establish position first with both feet in a neutral position. Align players to choose either pivot foot, depending on the defense's position. Once you secure the ball, using a power dribble, drop step toward the basket with two hands to seal the defender. This will help a young player finish with great balance. The drop step is just one move a young player will learn in my post class. In blue, their home uniforms here this evening. Your officials tonight, Roger Roth, Al Bundy, Frank Hancock, and quickly a shot by Bishop McDevitt will not go. Ball will be taken down by Camp Hill, and the Lions have it. And Mark Clark decides to come out and get after McDevitt, put pressure on him. I like the idea. Two experienced coaches here tonight, and Mark Clark and also Frank Bressy on the other side, Joe Bressy on the other side, forgive me, as Bishop McDevitt gets a steal right away, and they come back to the other end. Joe Bressy's first game ever here at the Spartan Center tonight. All the places he's coached, he said, there's Palestra, the farm show. And he said, I'd like to get the Giant Center sometime, but I've never been here. I'll tell you what, Mark Clark teaches a really good help side man-to-man -man defense. I've known Mark. I helped. I was participating in his first year of getting into coaching, and I was glad to be a part of it. Now he's an established coach. he uh, been doing it for years now. And again, steals the order of the day here so far. On the other end, nice conversion that side by Camp Hill as it's put away by Passion Bragg, the one of the two sisters. She's a sophomore, 5'10". Todd McCall is roving the sidelines here tonight. He's down to the baseline right now. Todd, good evening. Good evening. I like the I like going after a little bit here tonight in the championship game. I like Camp Hill coming out in that defense. Right away, you see Jazz, Jasmine Chisholm rather, driving to the line. She'll get fouled on the play, go to the line for two shots. She is a 56% free throw shooter on the season. You know, Bragg averaging 20 plus a game. There's not many girls in South Central Pennsylvania or boys averaging 20 plus a game, guys. That's a lot of points to try to keep down. You know, you look at this game tonight. Started out five sophomores, three juniors, and two seniors on the floor. A youth movement going on at both these places right now. Both shots up and good by Jasmine Chisholm. She's got the first two of the game. We have a tie, 6.40 to go in the first quarter. You're watching the mid Penn Girls Championship game. These two teams fought their way in here. Bishop McDevitt with a 51-47 double overtime win over Green Castle. And, of course, Camp Hill knocking off decisively 58-43 Cumberland Valley. Another good drive and creating the contact is Treasure George Morrow going to the line. A number of those sophomores out there. Carrie, that's part of Treasure's game. She likes to get to the basket. She's she's that physical player that McDevitt goes to down the stretch, and you saw that right there. She's not going to back down. 67% free throw shooter, 100 tonight so far. It's three out of three for the line early here for the Crusaders. Should they have her at 5'9"? I think, I think maybe a good 5'7". <laughs> I think that's what you do in the program. You always, always put the players up one or two inches taller. I guess that's... Always been that way when we were kids. I've seen people go both ways on that, actually, where they say someone was like 6'3", where they were like 6'7". I'm impressed with the physicality of passion brag, actually. Here's a long look down top of Camp Hill. Not going to draw higher that time. It bounced out of bounds. Should be off Camp Hill. It'll be logged to Bishop McDevitt. McDevitt's doing a good job of sagging on girls that aren't threats, putting a lot of pressure on Bragg. Really D'ing her up right now. Mr. McDevitt running a little, what we call a flex offense with a down screen and a back screen along the baseline. Just side to side continuity. And a drive to the basket, not going to go, but a foul on the play. As Olivia Fasick with her first look tonight. <laughs> foul marked up. Against Katie Collingsworth, her first team third now already against Camp Hill. It's still 5.40 to go in the first quarter. Inbounds it goes and put away nicely inside by Noel Cameron, the big girl you talked about in the opening, Charlie. You know, Gary, on that, that baseline play, you heard Coach Clark yelling, don't let her seal. They go box to box, and Cameron seals and gets a layup. 
How about that beautiful little look going to the basket by Diamond Bragg as she makes her presence known with the first bucket. Well, and had that ball not go in, I've never seen a ball go so softly at the basket and just bounce right out. So Bishop McDevitt gets two good looks at it. They're going to get a foul called coming back. Foul be registered on Treasure George Morrow, her first, team first against the Crusaders. Chisholm is going to make Bragg work all game long, and that's what Bressley wants to do. A little 1-4 high set this time. But he runs that little UCLA cut, that a pick and roll play, and then you get a drive like this, but tipped away nicely. Good hands. By Bresky. Brianna Bresky, a 5'7 senior guard with good defense there. It still belongs to Camp Hill on the baseline. Down 5-2 to two here in the early going. Good defense of the inbounds by Bishop McDevitt. Another long one downtown off the back of the basket. Another look. Again, long. Again, taken down. This time at Bishop McDevitt. Two on one break. It's going to be a walk, I think. She's going to keep shooting, Brad, because that is what they need to do to, win, to, to get points on the board is to have her take a lot of shots. The unfortunate thing for Camp Hill is they don't have anybody else to bring the ball up to get her the ball. And Joe Bressy getting Alexia Thomas up to the table right now, ready to get in there. Todd, it looked like Treasure George Morrow didn't know where to go when she came at you that time down the lane. Yeah, a little bit out of control. Looked like she took a couple extra steps and trip, but uh, no call there. Camp Hill ball. Camp Hill trying to be a little patient here. Probably a good idea because they've been forcing her early on. It's interesting what they do is flash the guard, then they get a little back screen on the weak side against against Chicago. A little motion. Here's another steal. Good up and in off the conversion is Jasmine Chisholm with her fourth point of the game, her first bucket. 7-2 and throw away by Camp Hill. Your coach Clark right here, you might need a timeout right now. 7-2, the Crusaders dominated here early. Take a look here, Chisholm with those great hands and takes it in. 50% is a steal, 50% is the put away. You know, Charlie, I, I go to you. That Chisholm, Chisholm name is just a, a big name in the Steelton High District. Three turnovers so far for Camp Hill in this one. There's a turnover for Bishop McDevitt. And this is where Bragg wants to push it in transition and get numbers. I would have, if I were her, I would have took it on that one. Oh, what a good hard drive to the basket from Sheridan Reed. She'll get fouled. She'll go to the line for two. Foul notched against Noel Cameron. It'll be her first team second. Reed at the line, an 85% free throw shooter for the season. 60 of 71. Look at that stroke, Charlie. You have to just kind of be drooling at that one. So second shot coming up here from Sheridan Reed. She's a sophomore, averages almost 13 points a game. Gets two right here. Pulls Camp Hill back to within three. And it's notched down from the outside as Olivia Fasick hits her first three of the night. 10-4, Bishop McDevitt leads it. Tough shot there to take it down by McDevitt. And it comes. Tracking it down as Thomas blocked out of there nicely that time by Diamond Bragg. Bragg with the basketball, goes up hard. Look at that little spin to the basket. What a reverse spin off the right hand of Diamond Bragg with four points. Wow. Yeah, now you, when you, she does stuff like that, you understand what people are talking about with her athleticism.
Lots of squeedy to both these offenses so far, Todd McCall. You know what? They're running through their sets. You can learn a lot fundamentally from both of these teams. Very identical in terms of running their sets through. Well coached. There's the versatility of knowing the camera. Nice little pull up of the lane that time by Noel Cameron. She's got four points. 12 6. 139 to go in the first quarter. Diamond Bragg doesn't draw iron on that one. Cross forts. RawSports.tv is a sports movement that promotes athletes, produces sports documentaries, highlight reels, original sports music, features full classic high school hoop games from the 1980s and 90s, and much more. RawSports.tv changing how you view sports culture. Shot by Bishop McDevitt, not going to go. They'll get their own rebound here. A good drive and a jump off that time. And in it goes. Off the hands of Cheyenne Collins. She's got two. Timeout on the floor. 14-6. Bishop McDevitt leads it with 103 to go in the first. We'll take a break on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Look, Ryan. Shh. Look over there. I see it. I see it. Is that what I think it is? That's a beauty. Wait, wait. Look. There's an even bigger one. Oh, wow. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, man. Don't worry, buddy. I know where there's a whole herd of them. Hoffman has them, so be sure to stop by to save a lot of bucks. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home. But don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. We help people realize their dreams of owning their own home with features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. Diamond Bragg, while you were away, drove to the basket, got called for a player control foul. It'll be her first, team fourth. So Bishop McDevitt with the ball in the lead, 47 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Gonna have a little shuffle of feet that time, which will be called against Alexia Thomas. So 42.2 seconds to go here in the first quarter. 14-6, the Crusaders lead it over Camp Hill. A little delay game here, spreading the floor out for the final shot. 27 seconds to go. Get a good look from the top of the key. Not going to go. The three-pointer has not been good so far for Camp Hill. Quickly, Bishop McDevitt to the other end. 11 seconds to go. Long look outside. Is it going to go? Yes, it is. Buried from downtown for Olivia Fasick, her second three of the night. 17-6. And Camp Hill misses the little buddy at the end. It's 17-6 at the end of one. Bishop McDevitt leads him to the Mid-Penn Championship on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. The Advanced Hoops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that. Advanced Hoops will be hosting AAU tryouts starting this February. Tryouts will be conducted for 4th through 12th grade teams. Advanced Hoops will also be offering 3D training for those looking to add new dimensions to their game this offseason. For more information, go to www.advancedhoops.com or give a call to 717-657-2620. Let's head down to Todd McCall here at the break. Gary, thank you. I was uh, just uh, in the huddle of Camp Hill. One of the things Coach Clark was emphasizing was, hey, he wants his defense to get in front of the cutters. And second of all, he wants them to be a little more patient on offense. And that sounds like a good remedy uh, to come out here in the second quarter. First quarter, McDevitt 4 of 10 for the field. Camp Hill 2 of 7. 
McDevitt two of two for the line. Camp Hill nothing out of four in three of goal in three point field goal attempts. Two out of two for Bishop McDevitt. Three of four for free throws for McDevitt. Two of two for Camp Hill. And the turnover department is the one that would you think would be bigger, but it's 4-4. Four, four. So 17-6 well, with a little trap coming out to start second quarter. Well, Mark McDevitt. Clark tried to put Sheridan Reed at the point to try to get Diamond Bragg the ball in a better position to score. It just didn't work. They just, Diamond Bragg's just going to have to try to get angles and, and, and get fouled and try to and try to put McDevitt in some, some foul trouble. Tell you what, McDevitt is going to work, going to the front, getting to the front of the iron. And that's what that's what Diamond Bragg has to do every single time. She gets a chance to in transition before McDevitt sets up in their defense that's designed to take charges and designed to, to trap. They got She's got to take advantage of every transition opportunity. That's the second foul now on Treasure George Morrow as Bragg misses the first free throw. And her one Achilles heel here, Charlie. She's only a 44% free throw shooter. So that's, even with her 20 points plus a game, uh, only 43% for the line. Well, at the college level, they'll definitely try to fix that, but they like her for her penetration skills. Second shot again, no good. As Bragg, nothing out of two. Two out of four tonight so far for the line is uh, Camp Hill. That was an historic win for Camp Hill over Cumberland Valley. 58-43, they just dominated in that game. Toward the end, it was a close game there in the third quarter. Then they dominated the end. Now they're going to get a little carry. Todd Bishop McDevitt is doing a great job of keeping the heat on right now, giving some different looks. And that's what Coach Bressy does. If you give him a timeout, he comes out of a timeout or start the quarter, throws a different look on him. And right now they only have one ball handler, and that's Diamond Bragg. Uh, that's the sure hand. Turnover. Nice Sheridan, nice steal. Sheridan is up, and she's going to get fouled on the drive. Yeah. And I'm surprised that wasn't one of those across-the-face flagrants. I'm surprised. So Sheridan's going to go to the line. Again, we know she's a pretty good free-throw shooter there at 85%, already 2 of 2 there tonight. As the foul will be recorded against Fasic, that'll be her first at the team four. So 14 fouls either way here so far. You know, Mike Starling in the house. This is also on rawsports.tv. Rawsports.tv. We're going to be hearing from uh, Big Star tonight. Mechanicsburg State College boys game coming up, Gary. Absolutely. Looking forward to our second one tonight, too. we got a long way to go with this one. And second shot coming here from Sheridan Reed. Two out of three so far tonight. Second one up and good. She's three out of four, but 17-7. Bishop McDevitt leads it here in the second quarter. Fasic. Fasic with a nice little scoop that time. Not going to go. Dragged down by Diamond Bragg. To the other end it goes. Camp Hill just can't get a ball to drop in that basket. But what a great pass. 70-foot pass <laughs> down court to Sheridan. That's a big foul because that's going to be two on Fasic. We still have a lot of time to play here in the second quarter. As back to the line goes Sheridan Reed. And Fasic's going to come out. That's a big move. That could be a turning point. Let's At 645, Fasic goes out of the game for McDevitt, and it is a nine-point game. Let's let's keep an eye on that. So here comes a second shot from Reed. Good stroke. Up and in. She's got five out of six so far for the line. So far, you look at Camp Hill, nothing out of four for the three-point line. Two of ten for two-pointers. And now their defense has taken over a bit. Good two-on-one break and the foul. So good, now, good job of getting back in transition. Now you see where Camp Hill is good. They're good in transition. If they can just get out, run lanes, that half-court set favors McDevitt defensively, but that transition game favors Camp Hill. Todd? No doubt about it. They, they like to get up in that transition. That's, just what, that's what hurt Cumberland Valley is the ability for them to get up and down. So Passion Bragg, only a 35% free throw shooter, misses her first of the line. She'll get one more here. Second one is up. And that's no good. They've missed the last four free throws. So the ball belongs with the jump ball to Bishop McDevitt. 
Free throw so far, Camp Hill is five out of 10 from the free throw line. Mr. McDevitt with the ball. 6.17 to go here in the second quarter. Don't forget, we've got our high mark halftime report coming up at our Center for Independent Living Halftime Stats. What's our highlights? It'll be out ahead here for you. A change to a zone here, Todd, has confused Mr. McDevitt just a bit, but they get a steal here. It's just enough to kind of throw them, you know, out of their game plan a little bit. I think it was a good call on Coach Clark's part. Well, what it's done, too, is it's taken them away from driving to the basket and gotten them to think more as an outside shooting team. Exactly right. It's just, it's just slowing that tempo down a little bit. Talk about threes this year. Camp Hill with 110 made threes. Bishop McDevitt with 91. player this girl is she hasn't really made an impact offensively yet in the game but you can just tell she's such a strong player guys she's got a mismatch against Chisholm if they want to post her up anytime you're gonna see a push off right here against Camp Hill that's a good call uh, the officials were on that one pretty good Sheridan Reed with the left hand push off fans team Pennsylvania and Craig Peters have teamed up to create a tremendous opportunity for high school boys basketball players to compete in the showcase AAU circuit Tryouts will be held on March 4th. Go to www.advancedhoops.com for more info. You're going to see again, moving the feet there. It's exactly right. She jumped out of that position instead of holding on with the pivot foot. Well, that was a, it was a nice squared up look, but that happens a lot with shooters. Sometimes they hop in the shot instead of step into the shot. Yeah, if your momentum is going in there, you're fine. Let's head out down to Todd McCall. He's got the coach, Jeff Thompson, with him down there. Todd? What's Coach thinking about this game so well, far? Well, Coach Thompson, let's first of all talk about what you saw in the first quarter going into the second quarter from these two teams. Well, tremendous defense by Jasmine, number three Chisholm, on, on Bragg, and it's frustrated Diamond a little bit, but she's certainly capable of taking this game over. Lightning quick, and if they get in transition, they could do something. I agree, and that transition, as we talked about, Coach Thompson and I uh, agree that Camp Hill's transition-wise, patience out of Bishop McDevitt, Gary. Here comes Diamond Bragg with it off another steal. Diamond Bragg with a pull up and buries it. Diamond Bragg, nice transition, under control. Timeout, Joe Bressy and Bishop McDevitt will take one as well. It's 17 11 on High School Sports Live to be on ABC 27. Today's advanced hoops tip will feature Archie Smith, our speed and agility expert. The block jumping drill is meant to develop the fast twitch jumping muscles in a young player's legs. This drill forces a player to jump constantly and should be fast paced while clearing the block every time. Players will develop explosive jumping skills doing this and it trains a player's body to jump quicker and have the endurance needed to jump in game situations. The block jumping drill is one fundamental a player will learn in my class. 17 to 11, 30 seconds to go in the second quarter here. Let's head down to Todd McCall and Jeff Thompson on the baseline. Coach Thompson, again, uh, starting this six-point game now. McDevitt ball crucial. Camp Hill goes to his own and, and really kind of offsets what McDevitt was doing offensively. And doing a lot of nice things defensively. Fazek's out of the game. This is Diamond Bragg's game right now. If she, if she picks it up, she, she could do a lot of good things. Gary, back to you at the bench. Well, immediately they go inside this timeout of the timeout. The foul is going to be called against Ann Johnson. That'll be her second foul. Uh, it- so with 17 to 6, so five unanswered so far. It's been kind of a carving, not a whittling, though, here for. Camp Hill at the line for two. Noel Cameron, 67% free throw shooter, and makes it. Tell you what, this girl, a lot of people don't realize how hard she worked this offseason. 
no Al Cameron to, to be that impact player and that senior leader for the McDevitt Lady Crusaders. I'm sure Coach Bressy and his staff are proud of her. Second one is up and good again. Five out of six for the line so far tonight for Bishop McDevitt. They stretch the lead back out to eight with 4.30 to play in the first half. Don't forget our high mark halftime report coming up. We'll have highlights at our Center for Independent Living halftime stats. Chris McDevitt almost with a steal. There you see Joe Bressy over the side. He's been at Bloomsburg State coaching women. He's been at uh, Bishop McDevitt where he was very successful winning the state championship or two. He's been around for a while. Here's a double team. Again, shaking it up at half court. Traps everywhere right now for Bishop McDevitt. What a move by Bragg. Bragg pulls it up. Off the front of the iron. Pulled down nicely by Noel Cameron. Mercedes Cheatham in the game for McDevitt. A, a really good freshman at 5'10". Strong player. Look at the move by Bragg. Bragg, one on one. Dishes it off. The dribble probably cost. Had two tough shots there. I thought, yeah, I thought she had her earlier, and at that point she might as well keep it. Yeah, Sheridan Reed made the mistake of Taking that extra dribble there and allowed the defense to get back and tip the ball away. 19-11, to 11, 3.44 to go here in the first half. Tom McCall. You know, I'm down here talking to Mike Starling, and we're just, we're just commenting on the guard play, in particular Diamond Bragg, and the smoothness, even though she's not quite got into her game yet, but just the way she handles the press and with her dribble, she has to have the ball in her hands at all times. But Joe Bressy has set up there against that zone right now. It's a high-low, and he's just not able to quite get it to where he wants to at the end. There's Bragg, pull up again, in the lane, not going to go, off the iron, taken away by Chisholm. And Chisholm, one on one against Bragg. And Bragg blocks it away. We're talking about head coach Joe Bressy. We'll come back to that. Look at Chisholm going hard, and Bragg says, not tonight. Good timing for Bragg. You don't see girl athletes have that kind of timing on block shots, so especially a, a guard. Still that 2-3 zone from... Camp Hill to steal away right here. Nice hands by Passion Bragg. Camp Hill's got to get something out of these possessions. Got away with, I think, a carry there. Bragg's got to get to the hole. They don't have any touches inside right now at all. The only thing they're getting is when Bragg actually drives. Now, here you're going to drive, but you're going to get no real good shot. As she was running away that time from the shot was Passion Bragg. 11 turnovers for McDevitt here in the first half. Another steal. Make that 12 turnovers. And good hands trying to get in there, but not going to do it as Brianna Bresky. She'll pick up the foul, her first. I think McDevitt's winning right now in the sense that Olivia Fazek, their best player, is not in the game. And they're holding serve and keeping the score, the, the distance of the score the same, eight, nine point game. Yeah, they've survived using the time of their side, Charlie. Great point. They're bringing Fazek in to Coach Bresky, 236. Interesting move. You're probably telling her not to, not to foul. Stay away from people. Pretty real the offensive head, though. There it is. It's in and out again. Sheridan yeah. Reed sees a cool shot that time. So again, they come away empty. Downtown it goes and buries it. Great shot out there by Brianna Bresky. Her first three of the night. That's the third three of the game now for the Crusaders. And they up the lead to 22-11. Camp Hill really does not have any flow to their offense at all right now. Good look for the side. They finally find a good shot for Sheridan Reed. Her first deuce of the night. She's got seven points. You almost feel like if Camp Hill just got on a roll, they could just knot this up in a second the way they're playing. They're just not, not hitting anything right now. Well, when you think Bishop McDevitt has 12 turnovers, too. They've given him a lot of opportunities, and there's an interesting call. As Presky is going to draw the foul. Foul will be on Katie Collegeworth. That's her second. Make that her third here in the first half. So at the line is Presky. 58% free throw shooter. Knocks it down here. She's got four. She's one of those that it might say 58%, but she's a really good shooter. Probably gets a little anxious and nervous early in the game. That's where you get a lot of your misses. But when it counts, 
she settles down, she's going to knock him down. She has a nice form, Brown and Bresky. Ashley Churdick will check it there for Collinsworth. And then the second one is up and good for Bresky. I jinxed her in a good way. <laughs> it's called the reverse announcer. It's jinx. Ball will be off. Bishop McDevitt out of bounds. These are great passes, but I don't know that Camp Hill girls can handle that level of a pass. I just don't. There's too many turnovers happening from those long passes. Todd, Camp Hill having a tough time fighting rhythm right now. Yeah, they are, and I think it's it's partly what McDevitt's doing. They're playing good defense, but there's a good shot there. That'll help out, though, as Passion Bragg finds the net for her fifth point of the night, the first three made in the game here for Camp Hill. They cut it to eight. Just like that. And they force a the turn over there with a little trap at half court themselves. Joe Bressley upset on the side as to the pass that was made. Hey, guys, it's 24-16, and nothing's going right for Camp Hill. I think that's a good sign for Camp Hill if they can just get a little fortune to go their way. Well, Camp Hill, one out of six for the three-point line. They're going to have to up those numbers to win this. they got to clear out here on this left side for Diamond Bragg they're looking for right here. Another one downtown. Will this one go up over the top? Not going to be there. Yanked out by Cameron. One minute to play here in the first half. Bresky again. She's got a good look. No. But inside position again by Cameron. She can't get it to go. Now McDevitt's struggling. That was Collins, rather. This could be a big one right here. Long downtown. Not going to go. Is it going to be off Bishop McDevitt or Camp Hill? Ball will go to McDevitt. I have one criticism. I like to see Bragg go rebound. When she's not shooting the ball as strong and athletic as she is, Get those second chance points. And there are no offensive rebounds. There's really not an inside offensive presence here in the first half if you're looking at what Camp Hill's done. 25 seconds. Eight point lead here for Bishop McDevitt. Inside it goes. Up. Not going to go again. Cameron had it point blank. 13 seconds to go. Here comes Bragg. Looking to make a move. Jammed. Eight seconds to go. Stole it away. Got back from Camp Hill, and you're going to get a backcourt call. McDevitt has a chance to end this half with the last shot. Let's see what they do here. Alexia Thomas back into the game now with 5.7 seconds to go. High mark halftime report coming up next. And a great interview with Dave Kerr from AT&T coming up. Chisholm, what a great pass. The inside shot. Good from Noel Cameron. Give credit to Chisholm. 10-point lead at the half. 26-16. Bishop McDevitt leads it over Camp Hill. We'll take a break. We'll come back with your high mark halftime report here on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Today's professional skill tip will involve using one-handed shooting to bring balance and stability to the shot. I teach young players to balance the ball in one hand, in close, to establish a squared-up foundation when shooting. The one-hand shooting further out forces the player to stay square, reinforcing balance and lift on the shot. This one-handed emphasis will only help with leg power and the ball rolling off the one hand developing more control and overall shot balance. The one-handed shooting is the fundamental tool I use to develop advanced shooters. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home, but don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. We help people realize their dreams of owning their own home with features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. Karen has 459 friends, but none of them made sure she got home okay. None of them suggested she skip the next drink, try a glass of water, or maybe just call it a night. Karen has 459 friends. But tonight, what she really needed was one good one. The front is mostly masonry. And then the masonry will meet the window frame. I think this project's really coming together. Living Well with a Disability is a free source for anyone with any type of disability. We provide countless resources and endless opportunities to live your best. I really am living well. 
Call 1-877-2-LIVE-WELL to discover resources available for you. Welcome back. Girls Mid-Pen Championship game. Camp Hill 16. Actually, Bishop McDevitt 26 leading tonight comfortably in the first half. I'm here with Dave Kern from AT&T. Dave, first of all, we'd really like to get right to the campaign, It Can Wait campaign, and how AT&T is teaming up to handle that with your students and people around our area. Sure. The It Can't Wait campaign has really been in place for about six years now, and uh, we've partnered with High School Sports Live probably about half that time, about three or four years, just to get the word out, Todd, to, uh, you know, really distracted driving uh, is, is really a problem. It's an epidemic, and we really need to work to combat that issue. So that's really what the It Can Wait campaign is about, to encourage people to, you know, we at AT&T love the fact that people communicate and communicate everywhere they are, but there's certainly one place where it can wait, and that's when you're driving an automobile. Absolutely. No doubt about it. We know distracted drivers. I mean, that is one of the big things insurance companies talk about all the time. But let's now talk about AT&T and your campaign uh, with, as you said, with It Can Wait. How can people be more involved, and where can they find information on your website? Sure. We come out to events like this. We get out to schools. We get out to basically a lot of different venues to talk about the campaign. Uh, we encourage people to go to itcanwait.com. Uh, we encourage people at events like this to come out and uh, on iPads take the pledge because when you take a pledge for something, yeah, you usually get all in and you uh, are more committed to it. But uh, take a look at itcanwait.com. You can uh, go on there, take the pledge. Uh, the latest thing we've done is when you go on the website, you know, take a picture of yourself. Take a selfie, not when you're driving, of course, but uh, take a selfie and uh, you know, write it can wait and really pledge to uh, to work hard because even if you're a parent, if you're a child, a uh, new driver, or if you're a parent, your kids really watch you. So uh, it's really an important initiative. Well, I'm going to send that tweet out as soon as I can. This is Dave Kerr from AT&T. Last thing I want to say to you, second half, uh, your, your, your idea is that will McDevitt hold on? Will Camp Hill prevail? I think we're going to see a tighter game here. I think uh, Camp Hill needs to move the ball a little bit uh, more around. But I, I think uh, Camp Hill is going to come out strong in the second half. Uh, I'm not going to predict who's going to come out on top, but I think we're going to see a good close second half. Well, we're appreciative with AT&T's campaign at Kim Wait and the partnership with High School Sports Live. Let's go back to Gary at the bench. Gentlemen. And we're going to take a break right now. We'll come back for our Highmark Halftime Report, and we'll be checking in with Jake Adams for the Carlisle Sentinel next on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Groff Tractor is your full line equipment dealer representing Case Construction and many other leading brands, serving the total sales, rental, parts, and service needs of its customers. Groff Tractor paves the way for your projects from start to finish. With 11 locations, Groff Tractor is always close by your equipment needs. Groff also offers 24 7 field service. Groff Tractor is your number one source for everything under construction. No regrets. If only she'd parked in a garage. If only they had the chimney cleaned. If only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened. At rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Your local Erie agent is Capital Region Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 717-731-1142. The Advanced Hoops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that. Mark Halftime Report, I'm Gary Sutton, and here at the table with Jake Adams of the Carlisle Sentinel. Always good to see you, buddy. Yeah, you too. How about, how's it going? Uh, not too bad. Pretty, pretty interesting first half. Lots yeah. of turnovers here from Bishop McDevitt. On the other side, you saw a Camp Hill team that didn't seem to be in the kind of rhythm they were in against uh, Cumberland Valley the other night. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, McDevitt's done a really good job of just bottling up Diamond, and, and everything runs through her on Camp Hill's offense, and if you can slow her down, which so far they've done, who knows what's going to happen in the second half, but so far they've done a good job of that, and the entire offense has been shut down because of it. Joe Bressy does a good job of changing up the defense, but on the other side, you've got Coach Clark, who's done a pretty good job himself, getting a few traps at half yeah. court and forcing some turnovers. Yeah, they did a much better job, Camp Hill, in that second quarter of just getting in front of passes 
and that really changed a lot of things. If they could have converted a couple of those layups then in transition, would have helped out, but they did a much better job just try, trying to be in the way of the ball that time. I didn't see the Cumberland Valley game the other night, but one of the things it seems is missing from the Camp Hill offense right now are any kind of post touches. They're not getting any kind of inside game at all. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, uh, I mean, that starts through Diamond. Uh, like When she's able to penetrate and get something going and kick out, it really helps. Against, Cam- against Cumberland Valley, they were able to get Addie Kirkpatrick in foul trouble, and so far they haven't really been able to do that with anyone in McDevitt just to kind of push them into some sort of trouble there. And so right now they're just able to pack in and, and keep everyone out of the lane. And once you do that against Camp Hill, th- 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 unless someone gets hot shooting, they're really in trouble. Jake Adams, always good having you here. Check Jake Thank out you. in the Carlisle Sentinel. We'll take a break. We'll come back with our Center for Independent Living Halftime stats and our highlights here on High School Sports Live TV. It's your Highmark Halftime Report right after this. For all those pokers, prodders, shuckers, and sniffers, all giant produce is triple checked, farm, crate, and store. We're focusing on fresh so you don't have to guess. My Giant. Save big on all of your game day favorites. Only a Giant, a proud sponsor of High School Sports Live. Did you know all electronics must be recycled? It's the law. But more importantly, it's the right thing to do. At the Recycling Center, Dolphin County residents can recycle older broken TVs, computers, cell phones, laptops, major appliances, even paper. The Recycling Center is conveniently located on Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It makes recycling fast, safe, and simple. Stop by the Dolphin County Recycling Center today and help us recycle the right way. Welcome back to our Highmark Halftime Report, your Center for Independent Living stats coming up, but the advanced Hoops first half highlights right here. And you see it come out of the gate. That young lady, Chisholm, did a nice job, but so did Cam Pill get the ball over this young lady as well. Diamond Bragg with a good pass. Gets it inside for her teammate and finishes it off. Passion Bragg. That was her sister. Then Chisholm kicks it quarter. Bresky downtown. Bresky buries it out of the quarter. Make that Fasick instead. And then Diamond Bragg converts on the other end. Again, here comes Fisher McDevitt right back at you. And a long look downtown and manages to get it to roll in. And then far quarter, it's Bresky buried another three. They had three threes in the first half to the Crusaders. But answering on the other end is Passion Bragg with a big three for the Lions of Camp Hill. Your halftime stats here, Center for Independent Living halftime stats. Five out of 15 in field goals made for McDevitt. Four of 18 for Camp Hill. Three of six for the three-point line, Charlie, for McDevitt. One of eight for Camp Hill. Big number there. Free throw attempts. McDevitt has only missed two. They're six of eight. Five out of 11 for Camp Hill. 13 total rebounds for McDevitt. Ten for Camp Hill. Then 13 died in turnovers. McDevitt has four more turnovers, but they got yeah. a 10 point lead. And, and I was going to point out that that stat makes sense to me because Camp Hill's press has created a lot of turnovers, but Camp Hill not, needs to convert. I mean, for Joe Bress to be up by 10 and have 13 turnovers, he's got to be a happy camper if they can take care of the ball. Let's get to Todd McCall. He's on the baseline. Todd, we're getting ready to start second half. Final thoughts. Well, I, I talked to Coach Bresky on the way in, and uh, one of the things he said, he said, we felt like our lead could be better had we made some of those bunnies, some of those high percentage layups. He said, we just need to settle down and finish. Well, Camp Hill needs to finish right here, too. Back to Braggett Cubs. They're double teaming Bragg everywhere she goes. Inside, it goes for Camp Hill. They got a point bank look inside. Won't go again. It's just off the iron from Sharon Reed. Fasic back in there now for Bishop McDevitt. And, Charlie, you made a great point in the first half about the fact that Fasic was out of there for a long time, and they managed to actually extend the lead when she was on the bench. Yeah, they essentially at times just played without her in the first half. Again, Bragg not going in for a rebound. I know she's to protect back, but most athletic, best finisher on the team. I can try to get her around the basket. Let somebody else protect back. Really running a little bit of a spread cut offense here. Chisholm, hard drive, won't go. Inbound to goes for Cameron. Pulls it down. Instead off the miss to Ann Johnson. Camp Hill, good dish off. Up, not going to go from Passion Bragg. Again. Three Camp Hill hanging on the perimeter. 
Kind of shots that Camp Hill's getting right now, Todd, are really kind of weak, fall away, off balance kinds of shots. They're not really using the board. They're not powerful. They're right, and they're and they're also taking that the toughest shot in the game of basketball is that corner shot, as you know, Gary. And they're just not getting good looks. Here comes Sheridan. Sheridan up, not going to go. Rebound again, not going to go. Simon yeah. Bragg gets it, that will go. And that's what we're looking for. That's what Camp Hill needs to do is Bragg to go in and assert herself with the rebound. Need cut to eight here. Bresky inside it comes to Cameron. Back to Bresky. Quarter shot, not going to go. Rebound, Camp Hill. Bragg with a great pass ahead to Sheridan. Sheridan up, good. See, if Camp Hill can convert... They're gonna, it's a six point game. How quick was that? 11 points for Sheridan now. A trap at half court for Camp Hill. Good head and shoulders fake. Nice block though inside. Diamond Bragg. Another block by Bragg. That was Passion, her cousin, right? Passion Bragg. Ahead it comes to Sheridan. It's gonna be thrown away though. Quickly, Bishop McDevitt back on the run. George Morrow has it. Pull up. Morrow can't make it go. Diamond Bragg pulls it down. Bragg becoming more aggressive on the glass. Bragg will have it knocked out of bounds, but Camp Hill, a little bit different team here now in the third quarter, Todd. Well, he got fire in their bellies. Coach Clark talked about him. I think even even you, Charlie Fortney, alluded to it. Their game is up and down, and now they've got to do that in the second half. Diamond Bragg off to... I see Passion off the diamond. Oh, in and out. That would look like it was going down from Passion Bragg. I could have cut it to one bucket. This game's heating up here. One of the things that Camp Hill has done, it seems, Charlie, is they've taken away the inside game that was hurting them so well early by Bishop McDevitt. Looks like Joe Bressy's going to spread the floor here on him, try to get some cutting lanes and driving lanes. Chisholm. Good look. Not going to go in and out. That looked like it was in. Another rebound there. And finally back up and in. Good stick to it of that, that time by Treasure George Morrow. She's got three. Lead back up to eight. Diamond Bragg banks open. There's it. First three of the night. She's got 11. Fortunately for her, that went in, but I. I... I just feel like for Diamond Bragg, she needs to get to the hall and finish. You know, Tom, one of the things that's interesting right now is Camp Hill is as good as their main shot because that's where they're getting their trap set up every time, and it's getting some good results. Yeah, they need made baskets to get that trap set in, and McDevitt is starting to turn the ball even over more. He talked about it first half, but you're right. you got to score to set up the trap. How do you stop a trap? You get a good defensive stop if you're McDevitt. Foul call on Chisholm will be her second of the game, first this half. You just feel momentum kind of taking over right now for Camp Hill, Charlie. They're down by five. They've got the basketball. I still think they've got to get good shots and finish, though. Bragg tried to bust through the double team there, and it will go over to Bishop McDevitt. Try to do a little too much that time. Yeah. McDevitt's still playing the game the right way, though, right now, and that's the key for them. Game really lacks any rhythm right here. It's been kind of choppy. Good look downtown. That's not choppy. As Fajic says, I can do it. Olivia Fajic. Not going to go from Camp Hill. Foul on the play inside. It's going to be marked up against Treasure George Morrow. That'll be her third foul. Looked like. Passion Bragg was over the back, but the referee had a better angle on it. You know, Fasic's got nine points tonight, and all are via the three. Three threes in this one. Back it comes to Bragg. Quarter it goes. Getting a good look from Passion Bragg. Can't make it go. Pulled down by Sheridan. Sheridan kicks it off. Has the girl open. Won't go again. Inside position by Diamond Bragg. Won't go again on the stick back. And the yank down by Bresky. Passion's aggressive on that rebound in the putback, but you got to finish. Todd, a lot of short misses down there by Camp Hill. They're totaling up on them. Yeah, you're right. They're getting high percentage shots. They're getting layups, but they're missing them. 
unfortunately for them. A little 2 2 1 three quarter press here. Fazek again. Did you make four in a row? Oh, yes. Fazek is hot. Four out of four from three point land. She's got 12 points and ups the lead to 11. Biggest lead of the night. Bragg goes against Chisholm, and she'll draw the foul against Chisholm. And that, and that has to be all night long. That has to be all night long. You can't just do that every now and then. you got to take advantage. She's the best player on the floor. She just needs to get to the basket. Only has one foul. You can afford a few charges. Just take it to the hole. Well, that's a third foul now, Chisholm. So if you know that over there, you can take advantage of that. Camp Hill, by the way, two for ten. And two-point field goals here tonight. Treasure's having a tough time here with the fouls. Treasure George Morrow with her fourth foul. And quickly, four fouls here. We're still 3-0-1 to go in the third quarter, Charlie. Well, bring Cameron Noel back in. Noel Cameron, I'm sorry. Uh, Not a bad replacement there, your senior leader. Big bucket here. You just sense that. Let's do advanced hoops at the next break. There it is. Not going to go. Rebound. Camp Hill somehow finds a way to get it in there. As a nice rebound by Ann Johnson. Her first deuce of the night. Lead cut to nine. Pull up baseline. Will not go from Bishop McDevitt. Pulled down by Diamond Bragg. She's running. Oh, and a good block on the other end by Cameron. And then coming down on the line will be... Ashley Chernick. Todd Cameron did a great job of getting back in transition that time and, and pulled off the block. It looked like she had a wide open layup. Chernick just for a moment. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's exactly what's got to happen now. You're going to see McDevitt breaking the press with just Chisholm alone. Chisholm dumps it off. Stolen away by Ann Johnson. Lots of turnovers in this one so far. Diamond Bryant goes hard to the basket. Will not go. Comes back at it again. Puts it back up. That one won't go. Rebound, Bishop McDevitt. Fazek has it. Fazek up in. Fazek having a great third quarter. She's got eight points in this quarter, 14 in the game. Under two minutes to play here in the third, lead in 11. The difference in the game is finishing. Finishing. And just one of those plays there where everybody was on a different page as David Bragg throws it towards Sheridan. He can't hook up. Sheridan Reed. Well, Camp Hill outscored coming out 17-2 in the third quarter on Tuesday night, 22-16 in the fourth. That's going to have to happen here tonight if they're going to beat McDevitt. Noel Cameron getting it back inside. Then she's going to go over the back on the missed shot. So Cameron gets marked up with her second foul of the game. But Joe Bressy got the shot he wanted that time. He got it back inside to Cameron, and that's where he wants to go. So Sheridan Reed will handle it here for Camp Hill. They're going to take Diamond Bragg off the ball. Sheridan Reed falling away again. Didn't have her feet set. And Todd, there you had a a shot by Reed. to get a good example of the kinds of shot they had. They've been weak. She wasn't really set. She was falling away. You're really trying to take a shot really quickly, and you're right. She didn't have her feet set under her, and that's that's part of the problem. Diamond Bragg into Passion Bragg. Got Reed open in the corner. Kind of a rush shot from Ann Johnson. Then pushed out of bounds, and it's going to be off Camp Hill. Belongs to Bishop McDevitt. McDevitt has uh, Camp Hill totally off balance with the defense. They're, t- they're tight right where they need to be tight. Air, no, no gaps in that in that zone. Mitch McDevitt doing a well, was doing a better job breaking the press than the log pass again. Diamond Bragg initiates the contact, and she may have pulled up the foul on Chisholm. And if so, that's the fourth foul. Yeah, she could get the whole team in foul trouble if she just stayed with that course. So Chisholm and George Morrow now each with four fouls in this one. And that's Gary and Todd. Every foul after this is foul shots for Camp Hill. If they can just make some foul shots like that, 
this is a game they could easily get back in and take over. Diamond Bragg with six this quarter. She's got 12 in the game. So Chisholm has to sit down. Second shot from Bragg. Those good, are big. Good looking stroke here in the second half, and she makes both. Those are big foul shots right there. She's got 13. 42 seconds to go in the quarter. 10 point lead for McDevitt. Trap coming from Camp Hill. Here you go. Look for the outside. Will not go. Brought down by Passion Bragg. And now Diamond Bragg, one on one with Bresky. Diamond Bragg up. Oh! And they're going to call it for a player control foul. That was a tough one. We might get another look at that one, but Diamond Bragg will be called for her second foul tonight. You make the call right there. Looks like Bresky held her spot pretty Not, well. Yeah, you know you know what? A little bit of acting, but you know what? I like the sportsmanship. Todd, uh, you got, Todd, you had the look right there. It was in front of you. Maybe a little Academy Awards. It's Academy Awards season, right? Yes, it is. It's a good acting season. And Fasic gets fouled on the three on the other end. She has a chance to get three shots here. Shurnick called for the foul. Fasic was lined up for a fourth three or fifth three of the night, rather. So here is Fasic at the line. And, guys, she plays so much older, Fasic. She's pretty much second-handedly, second-half-wise, has taken this game under her own belt. And, and boy, we're going to call her name for years to come in the next couple years. 15 points tonight. She's got four threes of this. You're absolutely right, Todd. Playing with the uh, steadiness of a senior. And you love to watch as a sophomore when someone shows up in big lights time, don't you? Oh, I tell you what. And she's been a big timer. Even a couple games we had in her freshman year, I remember when Coach Bressey first took over, he said, this kid is really going to be special. She really is. And she was big at the win over uh, Greencastle Antrim the other night. And she makes all three here. She's got 11 in the second half, 17 in the game for facing. Biggest lead of the night now, 39-27, under 10 to play. McDevitt not out of 11 for the game. Bragg can't make it. One more chance for Sheridan Reed. Has it tipped away, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. 39-27, Fish McDevitt leads it. We head to the fourth on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Did you know all electronics must be recycled? It's the law, but more importantly, it's the right thing to do. At the Recycling Center, Dolphin County residents can recycle older broken TVs, computers, cell phones, laptops, major appliances, even paper. The Recycling Center is conveniently located on Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It makes recycling fast, safe, and simple. Stop by the Dolphin County Recycling Center today and help us recycle the right way. Living proof of the difference you can make when you're all for health. Highmark Blue Shield. Hey, Advanced Troops will be hosting the AU tryouts starting this February. Tryouts will be conducted for 4th through 12th grade teams. Advanced Troops will also be offering 3D training for those looking to add new dimensions to their game this offseason. For more information, go to www.advancedhoops.com or call 717-657-2620. We head to the fourth quarter. McDevitt, by the way, from the free throw line, died out of 11 tonight. They are sizzling. Both teams perfect that quarter, three out of three and two out of two. A great steal. And then the knock away at the end. Good job by Diamond Bragg knocking the ball away from Mercedes Chetum into the game there. Cheetah, rather. So Bishop McDevitt with the basketball here. Cheatham underneath. Wide open. Left hand. Nice job. Converted as inside it comes to Bridget. Double check that to Alexia Thomas, rather. She gets her first deuce of the night. Missed by Camp Hill. And all of a sudden, wheels feel like they're coming off the wagon just a little bit, Charlie. Well, it's, a, it's, it's shot selection. Yeah, it's just the decisions you're making on which baskets you want to choose to take. 
McDevitt's doing a better job of getting the shots that they need. Fourth quarter, and you can make the clock your friend here a little bit. You don't have to be in a big rush if you're McDevitt, especially with Campfield as own. Looks like it goes to Cameron, and Cameron goes to work on the glass. And you just sense right now that Joe Bress is going to say, let's go to the glass, let's go to the rib, let's get to the front of the iron. The ball be brought in bounds here as the foul called on Ann Johnson. That'll be her third foul of the night. Missed shot there. Diamond Bragg with the rebound. Bragg underneath. Good pass. Again, another missed layup. Again, another missed layup on the offensive rebound. And Bishop McDevitt back with it. Mark Clark does not like that. He felt like he, they sh- Passion should have got a foul call there. Kasich has it kicked away. Passion Bragg with it. She's going to go hard to the rack here. You're going to get another player control foul. And it's a good call. Bresky taking it for the team again. Senior leader, Bresky. It's two in a row. It's making her impact on the game right here. So Passion Bragg will pick up the foul. That'll be her third of the game. After seeing the replay, it looked like she came in a little late, but she did have good position. I'll make myself corrected there. Her third of the game, 16 fouls this half. So far for Bishop McDevitt, five for Camp Hill. 14-point lead is Chisholm back in there. Chisholm kicks it off to Fasic underneath the camera that camera can't handle it. Uh, McDevitt's near him 20 turnovers here, but you know what? They're still up 14. I don't know if Joe Bressy has his Fitbit on over there, but he's put about five miles over that sideline right now on missed passes. McDevitt with 19 turnovers. That'll make the old gray in a hurry. Johnson needs this one and gets it to fall. And Johnson rattles it down. Tied out of the floor. 41 29. 6 3 to go on this one on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Groff Tractor is your full line equipment dealer representing Case Construction and many other leading brands, serving the total sales, rental, parts, and service needs of its customers. Groff Tractor paves the way for your projects from start to finish. With 11 locations, Groff Tractor is always close by your equipment needs. Groff also offers 24-7 field service. Groff Tractor is your number one source for everything under construction. Advanced Hoops and TPA are looking for a few more qualified AAU basketball coaches. Anyone interested in applying to coach a top-notch boys or girls AAU team, there are openings. To do so at the high school level, call Advanced Hoops at 717-657-2620. Ask for Ryan. Ryan Shipper, who does a great job for us, getting things ready every single night for these games. And uh, looking for those good coaches out there right now at Advanced Hoops. It's a great opportunity and a great program. Let's get to Todd McCall, who's back on the baseline. Todd? Thank you, Gary. I just uh, As you talked about it, you know, the wheels kind of fell off a little bit. Charlie mentioned shot, shot selection for Camp Hill. But don't take anything away from Bishop McDevitt. They played good defense here in the second half, taking those charges. Absolutely. Well, here's that 2-2-1 press, three-quarter court, back to the middle of the Cubs. And I think right now, if you're going to be Bishop McDevitt, you're going to see them work the clock a little bit here with 5.53 to go. Especially if Camp Hill stays in that zone for any appreciable amount of time. No need to be in a hurry. I think you're going to end up getting trying to get Cameron the ball here every time. Play a little keep away right now. And then throw away at the end. You know, Todd, one of the dangers you get here is you can take away your thought about trying to score and you start to just kind of pass it around and all of a sudden you lose a little momentum. They lost a little momentum with a turnover right there. Really, McDevitt doesn't have to force anything. They can move the ball around and eventually Camp Hill does have to come out of that zone. But yeah, a turnover there. And that was number 20 for McDevitt. But it doesn't seem to phase the score right now. Craig's going to have it tipped away out of bounds. It'll stay with Camp Hill. Don't forget, we got the boys game coming up next tonight at Goodwood State College in Mechanicsburg for the mid ped Boys Championship. Good pass inbounds. A sliding down the lane is Passion Bragg. She's got two. She's got seven for the night. And another steal here by Diamond Bragg. Big bucket coming up here. Reed in for two. Cut it to eight. 
13 points for Reed in this one now. And all of a sudden, the lead went from 13 to 14 to 8. There's Fazek trying to answer on the end and does. And she did. Boy, she has been the answer in the second half here so far. She, if they go on to win, she will most certainly be our hop and four player of the game. Up it goes. Not going to go for Ann Johnson. Long pass. Fazek wide open. Fazek in. Two more for Fazek. Great pass down court that time. She just doesn't miss those opportunities. 15 points in the second half, 21 in the game down for Fazek, yanked down by Noel Cameron to back up and it's the 12, just like that. Shot selection has been a key to the losing effort here for Camp Hill Lady Lions this afternoon. So now you get back at it. Joe Bressy's going to talk about getting everybody on the same page here. He takes a timeout. We'll take one as well. 45-33, 4.02 to go with this one on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. The Brenner family of dealerships gives you better pricing, better customer service, better selection, and a better service department for the life of your vehicle. We'll show you how at Brenner Chrysler Jeep, Brenner Nissan, and Brenner Pre-Owned. The Brenner family of dealerships on the Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg and on Paxton Street, Harrisburg, 24-7 at BrennerFamily.com. It's better at Brenner. Serving Central PA for over 95 years. And let's go to Todd McCall right now, who's been down in the huddles. Todd, uh, 12 point lead, not a whole lot of time left here for Camp Hill. No, you know, really, one of the things they're looking in their huddle, talking just about continued force and turnovers. Now, they've missed opportunities because they've had some layups, and they've missed them here in the third, fourth, start of the fourth quarter. So uh, let's just see how that unfolds. But right now, McDevitt's got control and uh, looking like they want to pull this mid championship out. I think that timeout, Charlie, was very simply Joe Bressy saying we're done playing them. We're going to start playing the clock down a little bit. The only thing we're going to take is layups. And I think you're going to see Noel Cameron get the majority of the passes down inside. Layups or uh, in, inside passes for layups. That'll be the way it'll look. They spread it out. Camp has no choice but to go flat out man-to-man here. There's Bragg. There's going to be your foul. You've got to do that. So far in the game, and here's here's the story for Camp Hill, Charlie. You pointed out, 10 out of 38, 26% tonight. That will not win you a lot of basketball games. Chisholm. Chisholm, Bresky, and Fasic out there all handling the basketball so well. Tough to take it away. Camp Hill also 2 out of 16 for the three-point line tonight, too. That has not helped them. And now you get the foul in the backcourt on Reed. So this is Ed Chisholm to the line. For Sharon and Reed, only her second foul. Team seventh, so Chisholm heads to the line. Let's take a look at Olivia Fasic. She's been dynamite here in the second half. 21 in the game. And take a look at her. She does it inside. She does it outside. Yeah, she's been the best player on the court tonight. Take a look at this. Just a good, strong move to the basket. Chisholm up. Not going to go. And yanked out again. Pulled out of there by George Morrow. Olivia Fazek was the only player in double figures on Tuesday. She picked up where she left off tonight. Same tonight. Only a sophomore. 5'8", sophomore guard. Foul again. And now if you're Camp Hill, this is your only prayer. You're down by 12, and you got to hope for some misses and then some scores on the other end. Todd? That's exactly right. Just literally taking an opportunity to finish from the foul line. That's how you win championships and playing good defense and rebounding. Chisholm rattles it out again. But again, unbelievable effort by Cameron. She'll have called for the walk. Well, Tom Mealy over there, the McDevitt athletic director, uh, you can see he's proud standing behind Bressy in the bench chair. I mean, they, you know, Tom Mealy's done a good job at McDevitt building the girls' program, bringing Joe Bressy back. What was Tom Mealy's, uh, one of his doings? Well, right now you can't take a lot of time if you're Camp Hill. You've got to score, and you can't get turnovers like that. So Bresky comes up with a turnover. Look what I found. But now you're basically just playing the clock. But they had to foul Fasic. 
And Fasic will head off to the line. She's a 62% free throw shooter, but she's three out of three tonight. She's got 22 points tonight. And I'll tell you what, don't look for her to miss again this evening. 22 points in this game now, we'll correct. Looking for number 23 on this trip. And finally does miss. I gave her the old announcer's hex. Frag pulls up with the leg. Let's it go. Not going to go. Frag says it was a foul. Official says not tonight. Two and a half to play in this one. Fisher McDevitt holding in on a mid pen championship right now. You got to watch the foul there. And <laughs> you saw Ashley Chernick, and I don't think she wanted to get that kind of push there. She kind of put her hand up her head. Coach Clark saying, listen, if you're going to do an intentional foul, go for the ball. Well, credit to McDevitt for creating that kind of frustration on the Camp Hill side because Camp Hill just can't, can't get anything done here tonight. Chisholm heads back to the line, and finally she connects again. She's three out of five there tonight after missing her last two. She's got five points in the game, but she's handled the ball so well tonight. Has been saddled with a little bit of foul problem. And a second shot up, good, six points. Don't forget, we've got our OSS Health Post Game Report coming up. We'll have our Capital Region Insurance Agency's play of the game and our Hoffman Ford player of the game. That's a very special conversation Charlie Fortney had with uh, Ryan Hoffman. Camp Hill trying to get it back. That's been the name of the, of the whole game tonight. Todd, not being able to hook up on those second and third shots. Well, we got just yes, now got an intentional foul, Gary. Let's go ahead and make that call there. Yeah, Sheridan Reed with the intentional foul in the backcourt. That's going to be two shots here and possession. But the efforts tonight, the second and third shots, they've not been able to put away. They beat Camp Hill. That's right. And they just haven't finished when they needed it. And Coach Bressy said it, his team hadn't done that in the first half. Well, they certainly settled in the second half. But, yeah, that's been Camp Hill's Achilles uh, heel tonight. Special George Morrow, two out of three for live. She's got four points tonight. What a good win here for McDevitt. They go on to win here uh, because here's Camp Hill going, wait a second. We just beat Cumberland Valley for the first time in whenever. Uh, the number one or two team in the state of Pennsylvania in the highest division, and, and here we are losing. The name. Coming down off that high is tough, guys. And you just wonder, I was just going to say, Todd, you wonder how much energy was expended in that win, and do you have enough left in the tank to try to go get this one? And I, I, I think you're right. I think they just played really above themselves and had a great game. And tonight they ran into a good fundamental team. We know Coach Bresky's record. We know what he does. His team's fundamental, and tonight – they capitalized when Camp Hill couldn't. Well, Coach Bressy certainly had a good plan for him here tonight. So, Diamond Bragg. Nine points under her average. Make that 11 points under her average tonight. She has 11 in the game. Here's a good look. And there's one. It's been that kind of night for Camp Hill. It has been. I mean, that is probably one of the – that's a signature. That's probably our play of the game right there. I always love the, when everybody looks around at each other and says, now what? You, now you have to get a basketball out and throw it up there. Find, find a guy like Duke McCamey, 6'9", that can just reach up there. And if I didn't have my loafers on tonight, guys, I might yeah, try to get up there and we, jump there. We know? got that. <laughs> I we could got Jeff Thompson over here. He's kind of itching to get out there. You know, while we're waiting for that to happen, what a game we got coming up here. State College of Mechanicsburg, the battle of the two maroon teams. Yep, State College of Mechanicsburg coming up next. The boys' bid pen championship will bring it all right here to you on High School Sports Live TV. Is Camp Hill tonight, three-point line. Check this out, two out of 18 for the game. Well, and Brianna Bresky smiling, a senior. Let's give her a lot of credit. She had injuries that had held her back in the past, and she's thriving in her senior year helping to lead her team to a mid-pen championship. Hats off to McDevitt Lady Crusaders. Took a couple of nice charges tonight. Uh, made some good threes. You know, Gary, one of the things I think tonight that she gets should get credit for is Bresky tonight played great job on Bragg, Diamond Bragg. And you know what? They ran Chisholm on her. Between Bresky and Chisholm, tonight they did a great job keeping Bragg out of the lane. And I thought a couple times in the first half that maybe they'd take Bragg and post up Chisholm and post up a smaller Bresky, but that never materialized tonight in this game for whatever reason. So heading back to the line now is George Morrow. 
Treasure George Morrow. Up and good. She's got five. She's been really solid on the glass all night long. She's kept a lot of balls alive, got a lot of offensive rebounds, Charlie. Yeah, what. absolutely. She She's worked very hard tonight. It's made a difference for her team. And, man, passion, brag. The whole Camp Hill team just couldn't convert tonight. I mean, McDevitt has over 20 turnovers, and they win by double day, almost 17. Well, it could, could be 20 before it's all over. Clark Clark gives a curtain call here for Passion Bragg. Here comes Reed, Sheridan Reed. Still a lot of basketball ahead for both these teams and districts. There's Diamond Bragg, downtown, will not go. Taken away by Chisholm. She's been like a jitterbug all night long. She gets called for a walk there, so the ball belongs to Camp Hill. One minute to play. So Joe Bressy's first trip into Spartan Hall here tonight is going to end up on the mid Pen Championship as Bresky checks out, along with George Morrow. There's Bragg. Let's it go. Will not go. Rebound there by Ashley Chernick. Reed kicks it off. Another look far quarter. That one not going to be any good. Reed tracks it down again. She'll let one more go for the outside. That won't go. Inside offensive rebound again, and back out it goes. It's stolen there by Facing. She's been everywhere in the second half. Olivia Facing, only a sophomore, solid player. Our OSS Health Post Game Report coming up in about 25 seconds. I have a feeling, guys, I know who's going to be the Hoffman Ford player of the game tonight. You don't have to be a genius to figure that one out. And one of her plays would definitely make play of the game. Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game. Under 10 seconds, the Bishop McDevitt faithful counting it in. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 50 to 33. Bishop McDevitt is your mid pen champion for 2017. The Crusaders coming back again under Joe Bressy and doing the job here tonight. As there you see Mark Clark, a very proud coach of Camp Hill, could not quite bring it home tonight. They go to 18 and 5 on the season now headed to districts for our Coach Bressy's team, 19 and 4. We'll take a break. We'll come back with our OSS Health Post Game Report, our Capital Region Insurance Agency's Play of the Game, and our Hoffman Ford Player of the Game next on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. The Brenner family of dealerships gives you better pricing, better customer service, better selection, and a better service department for the life of your vehicle. We'll show you how at Brenner Chrysler Jeep, Brenner Nissan, and Brenner Pre-Owned. The Brenner family of dealerships on the Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg and on Paxton Street, Harrisburg, 24-7 at BrennerFamily.com. Serving Central PA for over 95 years. What were you thinking, Chuck? You're not 18 anymore. Is my leg supposed to bend like that? Six months on the heating pad. I hope it was worth it. I wonder if cartilage grows back. Yep, that's going to break right in half. This looks so easy on TV. OSS Health Post Game Report. And let's go to our Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game. And there it was, Olivia Fasic doing a great job for the outside. Here it is on the kickback secondary break. And Fasic with one of four threes tonight. 22 points. You see Chisholm pick it back and you see it from one more angle. And there's Olivia Fasic, a 5'8 sophomore. She's got a lot of basketball in front of her. At Bishop McDevitt. Welcome back. I'm Gary Sutton alongside of Charlie Forty, Todd McCall, our OSS Health Post Game Report. And guys, our Hoffman Ford player of the game tonight had to be Olivia Fasic. She just came alive in the second half at 16 points and really helped to take this team on home. Todd? You know, she just couldn't really find that first half groove. But man, second half came out and done the things that we see her do. Look, penetrated here. You see her going to the glass. But it was the big four three point shots outside and then she converted from the foul line when she needed to broke the press tonight right here great release and that's what we know this girl can do big time player 
Charlie, she had four threes in a row, but then she went to the inside, got a lot of transition buckets, nice touches off the glass, pulled it out where she had to, showed you a lot of savvy here tonight. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes Olivia Fazek doesn't look the part, but looking the part is not near as big as having heart, and that girl has heart out there, and she she got the job done tonight. She's got a great, great basketball IQ, as Bishop McDevitt getting their awards right now. They are the champions here tonight. Hats off to Mark Clark and his Camp Hill Lions for having an outstanding season to date. They've got a lot more to play, hopefully, for both of these teams. We wish them both the very best of luck. We have another big game coming up here tonight, guys. The boys' championship is coming up next with State College and Mechanicsburg. It's going to be marooned everywhere you look out there. It's going to be a lot of fun as they go for the boys' mid pen championship. But first up, we've got a Hoffman Ford video for player of the game. Ryan Hoffman and Charlie Forby get a great conversation. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Ryan. Hoffman Ford is a proud supporter of High School Sports Live's Player of the Game. On behalf of High School Sports Live, we'd like to thank Hoffman Ford for their East Shore Player of the Game sponsorship. And welcome back to Spartan Center. And if we get a look here at the girls, they are... Check it out to see if it's real gold. Yeah, it is. And you can see the Bishop McDevitt Crusader girls. What a great comeback this program has had under Joe Bressy. They win tonight 50-33. to The girls' championship of the mid-ped came close last year. This year they fought their way to the Keystone over a really tough field. and managed to get in here. They were battle-tested with a double overtime win the other night over Greencastle. Tonight they make it look fairly easy despite having 20 turnovers. We have the boys game coming up next. Mechanicsburg and State College. Again, congratulations to Bishop McDevitt. 50 to 33 winners here tonight. Now stay tuned for a special plaque presentation with Samantha Kreps from Giant Foods. Hi, I'm Ryan. Hoffman Ford is a proud supporter of I'm here with Samantha Kreps, the PR manager for Giant Foods. We're at the new Jonestown Road store location. We are excited, not only because of the partnership with the Central PA Food Bank and Giant, but Giant is expanding in the community all the time. Samantha, I know you're excited about that. Talk about this new store, and it's right in my backyard. Absolutely. It's a beautiful store, and we just opened it last November. And you have everything that you could get at a Giant store right here at the Jonestown store. So we're standing in front of the produce, one of my favorite parts of the store because it's so colorful and beautiful. <laughs> and so that's why I like this section the best. The food stores in every local community are the mark of every community, but when you give back to the community, it makes it more special. And the Central PA Food Bank is dear to Giant's heart. Talk about how dear it is and why that partnership means so much to Giant Foods. You know, we started in the community more than 90 years ago, and we started as a company, we started as a giving company. And as a responsible retailer, what we do is give back to the community. So we've been working with the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank for more than 30 years. Just January, uh, we donated $10,000 to their Fill a Glass with Hope campaign. Now that campaign started about three years ago. And what is so special about that campaign is that it gets milk into the hands of children and adults who would go without milk. In 2008, we started a program called Meet the Needs. And what Meet the Needs does is we donate meat to the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank and five other food banks. And so far, to date, the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank has received 2.3 million pounds of meat. Now that meat goes to families who desperately need protein. So we're very excited to work with uh, the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. They've been a terrific partner, and they will continue to be uh, a great partner. What is most important about Giant is we have two initial pillars. Those two initial pillars are our children and eradicating hunger, and the third one we can't forget, supporting our servicemen and servicewomen. That's right, and High School Sports Live is proud to partner with these causes. The Central PA Food Bank is dear to our heart. It's the, it's the central theme of the campaign, and we would like to present to you this plaque because we've had cheerleaders all across the community, cheerleaders supporting this, 
bring in canned goods and non-perishables to games. On behalf of our president, Tom Lenkovich, and all my giant colleagues, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to the cheerleaders, the football players, the wrestlers, and the basketball players. Guys, this was a giant contribution to the community, and it's meeting a great need in South Central Pennsylvania. Today's Advanced Hoops tip will feature Archie Smith. Fasten your seatbelt. To become a top defensive player, you need proper lateral technique. The cone-to-cone -cone lateral slide drill will help a player practice getting quicker. It's important to keep the feet wide while the player is in a sit-down position with the back upright. When sliding back and forth, avoid crossing the feet or bringing feet together. Bit focus on short, choppier steps. The lateral cone drill is just one fundamental a player will learn in my class. No regrets. If only she'd parked in a garage. If only they had the chimney cleaned. No if regrets. only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened. At rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Your local Erie agent is Capital Region Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 717-731-1142. Did you know all electronics must be recycled? It's the law. But more importantly, it's the right thing to do. At the Recycling Center, Dolphin County residents can recycle older broken TVs, computers, cell phones, laptops, major appliances, even paper. The Recycling Center is conveniently located on Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It makes recycling fast, safe, and simple. Stop by the Dolphin County Recycling Center today and help us recycle the right way. Karen has 459 friends, but none of them made sure she got home okay. None of them suggested she skip the next drink, try a glass of water, or maybe just call it a night. Karen has 459 friends, but tonight, what she really needed was one good one. At Pizza Hut, our original pan dough rises fresh every day, making it crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. And now you can get our original pan as part of the $6.99 any deal. That's two medium pizzas with any toppings, any crust, any specialty for just $6.99 each, only at Pizza Hut. Today's Advanced Hoops tip will feature Duke McCamey our post-training expert. The Miking drill is a foundational drill that I teach all young players that sign up for my class. This drill teaches players to finish around the basket while using proper footwork. It's important for players to use the right hand on the right side and the left hand on the left side. I teach players to shuffle their feet and get low while exploding into the layup. Squaring feet and squaring shoulders is the key to consistency and timing around the basket. The Miking drill is a foundational drill for every young player to learn in my class. What were you thinking, Chuck? You're not 18 anymore. Is my leg supposed to bend like that? Six months on the heating pad. I hope it was worth it. I wonder if cartilage grows back. Yep, that's gonna break right in half. This looks so easy on TV. For all those pokers, prodders, shuckers, and sniffers. All Giant Produce is triple checked. Farm, crate, and store. We're focusing on fresh, so you don't have to guess. My Giant. Save big on all of your game day favorites. Only a Giant, a proud sponsor of High School Sports Live. Here you go. 
Living proof of the difference you can make when you're all for health. Highmark Blue Shield. Well, we're in, be- in between games right now. Here's we get ready for the boys state cha- or state championship game. How mid pen championship game? I'm thinking ahead a little too far right now. But <laughs> the with districts me, and the states are coming. And you got it. State <laughs> College of Mechanicsburg warming up. But with me, good friend Mike Starley, big star. Always a pleasure, you, man. Always, Fred, brother. Always. Yeah, and uh, Raw Sports. Dot TV. Yeah. You got a real sports movement going on out it's there. It's going right down, now. man. The move is going, man. You know, just representing the culture. Uh, people love what I'm doing. Every age group, every gender, every race, everyone, people, people across the country. I mean, I have some fans and supporters like in Nigeria and in overseas in Italy. Uh, you know, young kids come up to me, to me at the games and they say, hey, we watch your games on YouTube, you know, and, and you know, uh, just it, it's, it's awesome. It's a blessing, man. It's a real labor of love for you, though. You talk about a culture. Talk about what that culture looks like to you as you get that word out on all kinds of different levels here, not just basketball, but a lot of other things, too, in terms of yeah. music and, yeah. and movies well, and stuff. Well, you know, Raw Sports represents, you know, the culture. And when I, when I say the culture, I mean, you know, uh, football, basketball, right. uh, you know, boxing. Um, and, you know, film and music go hand in hand. So, you know, I, I produce my own music. Um, and I just, you know, I represent, I, I'm the heartbeat of, of the community. Everything that comes from the community you know, where, 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 where things were born and raised, you know, that, that, that's what, you know, raw sports, you know, that's what, that's the epitome. That's what raw sports makes up. So many different aspects to basketball, just sports out here. And there's a lot of great stories. You're right here to capture it for people. Again, they can check you out at rawsports.tv. Rawsports.tv. You got a sports movement that's promoting athletes, it's promoting sports documentaries, music, highlight reels. And the old school. And the, the old classics. school. And we love it. They could, they, it's been a, it's the, the thing that I love, one of the things that I love is, you know, like randomly, I'm at a game, I'm in a grocery store, and someone will say, I recognize you. You're the guy who did that Billy Owens thing. I was at that game. So, I mean, those are the, the priceless moments for me to be able to bring back the classic stuff like that. Um, you know, it's just, it, I love it, man. It was priceless moments just to be able to, you know, bring back stuff like that, you know. Star, it wouldn't be a championship unless you were here, man. You got the stamp on it tonight. Oh, man, God bless you, buddy. Thanks. Take care. Mike Starling. And check him out at rawsports.tv. They got a little bit of everything for you. If you love sports, you love sports culture, you love basketball, check out rawsports.tv. We'll take a break. We'll be back and get ready for the Mechanicsburg State College matchup for the mid Penn Championship here on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Today's professional skill tip, I will be teaching the offensive jab step, where a player catches the ball and aggressively pivots facing the basket while jabbing into a shooting position. The jab is meant to create momentum into a game speed shot to set up a player with a fake and a long step toward the basket. The jab should be quick and the second step long enough to step past the defender. This move should be practiced going right and left. Repetition will create a quicker step over time. The jab step is a key fundamental every player will learn in my classes. The front is mostly masonry. And then the masonry will meet the window frame. I think this project's really coming together. Living Well with a Disability is a free source for anyone with any type of disability. We provide countless resources and endless opportunities to live your best. I really am living well. Call one 877 live well to discover resources available for you. Uh, a cyber school is a form of virtual learning. The amazing part of CCA is the ability to be able to choose my own courses, and the teachers are really there to help me when I need it. It has made school more fun and more interesting. It's more of a learn-at-your-own-pace school. I'm somebody who takes a bit more time than most people, and I think being able to have that bit more time has really helped my grades. Like, I'm an honor student now. It's never happened before.
At Pizza Hut, our original pan dough rises fresh every day, making it crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. And now you can get our original pan as part of the $6.99 any deal. That's two medium pizzas with any toppings, any crust, any specialty for just $6.99 each. Only at Pizza Hut. Today's professional skill tip will involve using one-handed shooting to bring balance and stability to the shot. I teach young players to balance the ball in one hand, in close, to establish a squared up foundation when shooting. The one-hand shooting further out forces the player to stay square, reinforcing balance and lift on the shot. This one-handed emphasis will only help with leg power and the ball rolling off the one hand developing more control and overall shot balance. The one-handed shooting is the fundamental tool I use to develop advanced shooters. No regrets. If only she'd parked in a garage. If only they had the chimney cleaned. No if only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened. At rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Your local Erie agent is Capital Region Insurance Agency. Get a quote at High School Sports Live, in partnership with ABC 27 News, is proud to present the Mid Penn Boys Basketball Championship here at Milton Hershey High School at Spartan Hall. Tonight's matchup features the State College Little Lions, a record of 15 and 3, the champions of the Commonwealth, against Mechanicsburg Cougars, representing the Keystone Division, a record of 18 and 4. This broadcast is brought to you by our premier sponsors, the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency and Brenner Family of Dealerships. Good evening, everyone. Gary Sutton alongside of Charlie Fortney and the coach, Jeff Thompson, here with you tonight, and we are ready for a good one. When you talk about Mechanicsburg coming out of the gate, Mechanicsburg coming here tonight, the champions of the Keystone, and you really got to start with Cade Alioth. He's a guy that really anchors over the inside, Charlie. He's very athletic. Cade stands about six foot six, kind of like a volleyball player type build, can get up, but he is going to... His wings are going to be clipped a little night tonight by the physicality of State College, so it's going to have to... Uh, B, Kyle Scheib directing traffic. Shane Homick stepping up, using his athleticism from the wing, knocking some shots down. And then Adam Schlagenschlager. He likes to clamp down the best scorer on the other team. He's going to have to do his job. It's going to have to be a team effort. Strickler's going to have to put a uniform on out there tonight. The Mechanicsburg fans are going to have to go crazy for them to even have a chance tonight. But I think it's possible. There's a little bit of destiny rolling in the, the Wildcat veins, I think. On the other side, Jeff, State College, a team we have not seen this year. They're up north somewhere, but they won the Commonwealth, a tough Commonwealth division this year. Maybe not a great Commonwealth division. They walked the tightrope. They won all the close games. They could be here today with the guys who have been playing big in the big games. Drew Freitag. Drew Freiberg, he's a great player. His younger brother, Tommy's also out there, but Drew does it all. He can shoot from the perimeter. He goes inside. He plays good defense, and he's a great teammate. And don't, wor- don't forget about Tommy Secunda, who can shoot from the outside. Another good player with good bloodlines. They were tested in the, in the league this year. You talk about Freiburg. Here's a guy that comes up big when the big lights are on. Well, he, he's a, he played some football, so he got a little bit stronger. He really seems to emerge in the, big, in the big moment. I'm excited. They're tough defensively, too. Both these teams are quieters tonight. They both average around 60 points a game. They both give up around 44 so look for a game tonight. There could be a tractor pull out here, but you never know. It's a mid-pen championship, the boys' style, coming up next here on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. It's better and better. The Brenner family of dealerships gives you better pricing, better customer service, better selection, and a better service department for the life of your vehicle. We'll show you how at Brenner Chrysler Jeep, Brenner Nissan, and Brenner Pre-Owned. The Brenner family of dealerships on the Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg and on Paxton Street, Harrisburg, 24-7 at BrennerFamily.com. Serving Central PA for over 95 years. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home. But don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. 
we help people realize their dreams of owning their own home with features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make okay. your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. The Advanced Troops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that. Today's Advanced Hoops tip will feature Duke McKamey, our post-training expert. One of the key moves I teach young players is the drop step. It's important to establish <coughs> position first with both feet in a neutral position. Allow players to choose either pivot foot, depending on the defense's position. Once you secure the ball, using the power dribble, drop step toward the basket with two hands to the defender. This will help a young player finish with great balance. The drop step is just one move a young player will learn in my post class. What were you thinking, Chuck? You're not 18 anymore. Is my leg supposed to bend like that? Six months on the heating pad. I hope it was working. I wonder if cartilage grows back. Yep, that's going to break right in half. This looks so easy on TV. Today's advanced group tip will feature Gerald John, former Division I point guard from the University of Richmond. The figure eight cone drilling drill is a great drill to teach players how to cross over right and left as they go around the cone in the figure eight cone. Shive, it also Kyle teaches players to hook the ball right and left as they go around the cone. These skills in a game speed motion will help a player develop control and speed in the open court. The most effective way to execute this drill is to time them in 30 second intervals so they push themselves at a fast pace. This is a key drill I teach my players in my crossover intensity class. Look, Ryan, shh, look over there. I see it, I see it. Is that what I think it is? That's a beauty. Wait, wait, look, there's an even bigger one. Oh, wow, shh, shh, shh. Oh, man. Don't worry, buddy, I know where there's a whole herd of them. Hoffman has them, so be sure to stop by to save a lot of bucks. Welcome back to Spartan Hall. We're getting ready for the boys' mid pen championship. And you take a look at the starting lineups there, our Connections Academy away team starting lineups and our Pizza Hut home team starting lineups. But starting tonight for State College, Eli Bakunovic. You've got Brandon Clark, a 6'4 junior. Bakunovic, a 6'6 or 6'0 senior. Drew Freiberg averaging 17 a game, wearing number 12 tonight, a 6'6 junior. Tommy Freiberg, 6'5, a sophomore, averaging 5 a game. He'll wear number 10 tonight. And Tommy Secunda, 6'5, averaging 15 points a game. On the other side, Kate Alioth getting about 17.3 a night for Mechanicsburg. You look over there, Shane Homick, who's been getting hot lately, averaging eight and a half points a game. Adam Lawdenslager, two and a half points a game, wearing number 10. Nathan Meyer, Nick, number 14, getting five and a half points a game. And finally, Kyle Scheib tonight, averaging 12 points a game. Let's take a break for our national anthem. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home. But don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. We help people realize their dreams of owning their own home with features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. 
I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. The Advanced Hoops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that. Did you know all electronics must be recycled? It's the law, but more importantly, it's the right thing to do. At the Recycling Center, Dolphin County residents can recycle older broken TVs, computers, cell phones, laptops, major appliances, even paper. The Recycling Center is conveniently located on Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It makes recycling fast, safe, and simple. Stop by the Dolphin County Recycling Center today and help us recycle the right way. Maroon and white is in style here tonight for this championship game as State College coming out there wearing white uniforms tonight. Maroon lettering on the other side. You've got the Wildcats, Mechanicsburg in the maroon, white trim. They'll be wearing the dark uniforms tonight going from left to right on your screen. There you see your Pizza Hut Mechanicsburg starters. Keep an eye on Alley off tonight. But also guys like Holman can try about, shy about there, can shoot the ball. On the other side, State College. Uh, has a couple of guys come out tonight. Tommy Secunda, a guy who can gun it with the best of them, 15 points a game. And then you've got Drew Freiberg, who's averaging 17 points a game. They are the one-two punch for the Little Lions from State College. Todd McCall will be on the sideline tonight, the baseline, and we are just about ready to get this one underway. The Wildcats going up against the Little Lions, and we're getting ready for a cat fight here tonight. And the tip will be controlled by State College. Looks like Mechanicsburg going to start man-to-man. Kudovic throws it away right away, and Mechanicsburg's home and gets a steal. Inside it goes to Alioff. Alioff tried to make the move. Alioff up off the glass, not going to go. Good positioning that time by Drew Freiberg, the big 6'6 forward. But a good sign that Kay got it low and made a strong move to the hole. Little left-handed run there from Tommy Secunda. Back out it comes to State College again. Both these teams kind of long, wiry teams. Secunda, downtown, will not go. Yanked down nicely by Kyle Scheib. Scheib to Holmick. Holmick wide open. Holmick buries it. That could be the X factor tonight if Shane gets hot. We're in a game. 22 threes for the year. We're not going to get ahead of ourselves yet. We only have our opening bucket, so we get it underway here. But Holmick had that one lined up from out there on the three-point line. Here's a nice look to the high post. Will not go. Rebound goes to Mechanicsburg. Again, it's Holmick. Shine pushes it ahead. Got Brandon Clark down there, the defensive specialist who was on Alioff. Inside it goes to Alioff. He had good position, but Shine threw it maybe just a little bit early there, Jeff. At a little... The angle wasn't quite right. Let's go down to Tom McCall. He had a good look at that post up. I just believe Shive threw it from the elbow, just maybe one more dribble, and he had a good look there. But that's the right idea if you're McKingsburg tonight going inside. And Alioff knows how to get position down there. He had his man on the high hip, so we'll see if that they come back to that later. State College gets to Clark. Clark double team back. Good steal. Taken away by Meyernick. Second turnover by State College. So here comes Mechanicsburg, Shive handling the basketball. Holmick wide open again, and Holmick's going to let it go and rattles it down. Holmick with two threes out of the gate. He's in quite, he's in rhythm. What a nice touch he has had. It almost looked like he didn't have his feet quite set, but he fooled me. He had a lot of power on that. There's another steal, third turnover. They're going to head to Shive. Shive attacks the basket. They're going to have a foul called. As Shad saw, he was one-on-one with Makunovic, and Makunovic picks up the first foul. Kyle, Kyle is handling himself quite well in the open court. This, is, this could be another key to the game. Kyle Scheib for the season, 9 out of 10 for the free throw line. Make that 111 out of 152. I'll get that right. They have two lines for him, and 73%, pretty good shooter. 
So up and good, and Mechanicsburg runs out to a seven-zip lead here. Todd, I think State College is a little bit surprised here about how Mechanicsburg has come out of the gate. Well, I think there's a little fire in their eyes. Remember, they won the Keystone Division, which was a very evenly strong match, and they are not going to back down here tonight. Well, and of course, the Commonwealth Division, the granddaddy of the four here at the mid-pen, no question about it. And so here's Mechanicsburg coming back, kind of a saggy man-to-man here, Jeff. And it's been effective so far. Here you go. Nice look that time to Secunda. And Secunda finds an open look at the foul line, buries the first two points for the Little Lions. And here's what you have to watch out for, this pressure. And it's going to be taken away against the pressure. And the foul will be called against Mechanicsburg. Foul marked up. We'll wait and see. That's going to be on... Myernick, his first, team first, so one either way so far here in the first quarter, 5-13 to go. Boy, Secunda likes to go to the rack, and look at him, a little running one-hander for Tommy Secunda. He'll make you pay going one-on-one. He has a lot of confidence in his offensive game. Here's that trap again. Got to be careful. Alioth has it. Good look for the quarter. Partially tipped by Clark. Pulled down by Freiburg. Freiburg coming hard himself. Freiburg has it knocked away. It'll belong to the Wildcats. Hey, RawSports.tv is a sports movement that promotes athletes, produces sports documentaries, highlight reels, original sports music, features full classic high school hoop games from the 80s and 90s, and much more. RawSports.tv changing how you view sports culture. And how about that? Secunda! Downtown! Tommy Secunda with seven points. I, I, I find it interesting they're guarding Drew Freiburg with the point guard. Out it comes. Wide open three again. This one will not go off the hands of Myernick. Either of these teams are prolific three-point teams. And Secunda, I thought maybe you had a few too many steps, but the official says no. That's called a Euro now, I believe. <laughs> it used to be called a walk. What would you have on that, Ty? Was that a walk or was that just two long steps? I'm going with two long steps. Okay. Maybe Euro long steps <laughs> for, for Mr. Segunda. But you know what? That miss, they go 19-9. They're settling a little bit outside. They were hot early on coming into Mechanicsburg. But Segundo, Tommy Segunda will make a, 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 hurt you quick with his transition game. Well, it's Segunda 10, uh, Mechanicsburg 8 so far. And I, I really think that right now, State College is doing a good job of speeding up the offense of Mechanicsburg, maybe a little faster than they can play, Jeff. Well, I'd, I'd like to get the ball back in Shane, Shane Homick's hands again. He just hit two for two. There's a good look. Nice job by Shine. Shine loosens him up a little bit with a nice three. Nice throw, Kyle. All the points by threes so far for Mechanicsburg. Except one little deuce. Two line, two shots at the line by shot. Bay College is very tough when they score because they can set up their zone pressure. Tomek tried to eye one up. He's being guarded tightly there. Tomek, good move to the basket. Up and under. Not going to go. Back up it goes. Alioth misses it. And then Meyernick knocks it away on the outlet pass. I'd say Cade has some juices going. He was way long on that two-footer. Into the game comes Ty Dieter for Mechanicsburg. And checking in for the first time tonight is Ryan McNulty, a 6'5 junior, averaging eight points a game for State College. Also in there, number one, Keaton Ellis, a 5'10 sophomore, getting five points a game. Missed shot outside. Rebound State College. Back out it goes. Another look. Ellis just into the game. Banks open. Knocks it down. The bank is open. First three of the night here. Make that second three down for State College. That was the first guy not named Secunda to score. And he, ha- and he needed a triple bank to do it. Head coach over there, Joe Walker. Bob Strickler, of course, from Mechanicsburg. Rattles out there for Mechanicsburg. Ellis has it. Kicks it ahead. And I think you're going to get a player control foul right here. It's going hard to the basket was Tommy Freiburg. And Freiburg picks up the foul, his first team second. And Shane Homick got a good one to the chops if you watch that play. 
Four turnovers so far for State College in this one. 2 2 1, three quarter court press here. Well, I'll tell you, Scheib is weaving his way in and out of that. He's handling himself very well. Hobick has it blocked and a second foul against Tommy Freiburg. Looked like it was pretty clean up top, but see if it maybe got with the body. As you see over there, Joe Walker probably not terribly happy about that. But he's saying to Freiburg, hey, you know, you can't go up like that with a three-point shooter. So Hobick at the line. But Hobick, first one up and good. First time he has a shot up at the three-point line. That he's a 67% free throw shooter. And Joe Walker over there talking to the official. Our officials tonight, Chris Foltz, Brad Yingst, and Bob Parambo. And second shot up and good from Hobick, who's got a great start. He's got eight in this one. Tied it up, 13-13, 2.30 to go here in the first quarter. And another player control foul. This time it goes against Keaton to Ellis. So the game choppy right now. You can see he separates his arm. Good call by the official right there. Nice play by Kyle Scheib. Keep that elbow in close. Bob Strickler on the other side from Mechanicsburg. He's been there for 14 years. Good steal by Walker. Walker is kind of their defensive specialist. Scheib gets it back. Scheib kicks it off. Alioff has really been a dodd factor so far. It's a draw. Drew and, and Cade, a draw with Drew. Two feature players, too. Are they going to look for him one-on-one -on -one here? And he lets it go. To kind of a weak shot that time. Not really maybe the shot you wanted exactly. Oh, I like him going off the glass hard. You're right, Coach. Here's a good look downtown for State College. Will not go. Yanked out again by Ellis. Back out it comes to Kudna. He loves to go to the rack. For example, another offensive rebound, another stick back. Not going to go. And Hovick drags it down for Mechanicsburg. 127 to go here in the first quarter. Inside it comes. Alioff trying to use the basket. Tough move. Will not go. Puts it back up. Not again. And he's going to get fouled on the play. Boy, they're really working inside. Boy, the Alioth Freiburg matchup there is fantastic. Todd, you're right down there. You're seeing it. Those two are really going head to head. I thought it was, they are definitely. I thought it was a good move out of Kate Alioth. And I thought he was fouled a couple times there, and he stayed with it. Now he gets an opportunity to foul line here. I like what I see out of both teams, but more importantly, nice aggression early on and physicalness uh, out of McKanksburg. They're matching the Commonwealth physicalness. Alioth cannot find the net just yet. No points here in the first quarter. He averages 17.3 a game. Sometimes in a big game, you get pretty emotional. It's hard to find the bottom of the basket early. I think he's got his work cut out for him because Alioth goes about 6'5". And I'll tell you what, Freiburg is a big 6'6". Six, six. Alioth's second shot is up. That also no good. So a chance to take the lead. And back up it comes. Good answer on the other end from Ellis. Keaton Ellis with his fifth point of the night. And then a foul in the backcourt. And the fouls are bounded up right now. Freiburg just got his a moment ago. State College has not lost since the 6th of January, and that to Carlisle, 77-70. to And that was one heck of a game, too. So far, Kyle Scheib's been very impressive handling this pressure. Well, they've lived off the three. They're three out of five at the three-point line. Nothing out of eight from two. That tells you they're not getting that inside game, and they're four out of six at the free throw line. Here's that trap again by State College. Alioth cannot go one-on-one -on -one here against Secunda. And there it goes Hovick. And Hovick gets the shot he wanted, could not quite make it go. And the ball belongs to the Little Lions. 42.9 seconds to go. 15-13, State College leads it. Checking back in is Ty Dieter. And he'll take Kate Alioff out of the game for a rest. No, it'll be Hobick. 15-13, State College has the ball and the lead. 38 seconds to go here in the first quarter. There it is, long look. Wow. Downtown, Drew Freiburg shows you what he can do for the quarter with his first three of the night, a five-point lead. For the Little Lions, it ticks down near 20 seconds to go in the quarter. That's Drew's other dimension. He can hit from outside. He's got a tremendous shot. Here it is, another look. 
quarter, will not go. Secunda drags it down. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. State College got Clark wide open, and Clark walks. So Mechanicsburg gets a chance to end here. So get Holdick back in there for the three-point effort, possibly. Dieter will check back out. So a little offensive, defensive move there for Bob Strickler. Now you want to get one shot off here. Here's Scheib. Scheib pulls up. Scheib lets it go. It will not roll in. Pulled down by Freiburg. No good. It's 18-13 to end the first quarter of the Mid-Ped Boys Championship game. All here on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. The Advanced Hoops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that. Advanced Hoops will be hosting AAU tryouts starting this February. Tryouts will be conducted for 4th through 12th grade teams. Advanced Hoops will also be offering 3D training for those looking to add new dimensions to their game this offseason. For more information, go to www.advancedhoops.com or give a call to 717-657-2620. Let's go to Todd McCall down on the baseline right now. He's with Charlie Fortney down there. Todd? I'm with Charlie Fortney from Advanced Hoops. Charlie, uh, first quarter, 18-13, Kingsburg come out a little fire. Your thoughts? Well, Mechanicsburg, I think, is doing as much as they can right now. The physicality difference, if you're on the floor, is, is huge. State College is more football player-like with skill. Uh, Mechanicsburg's going to have to shorten the possessions if they're going to have a chance here and take take good shots. Gary, back to you. Well, they're also going to have to learn how to score inside. In, inside. Nothing out of 10 for the two-point area in the first quarter. Five of 10 for State College. Mechanicsburg stayed in there by going for three for six from the three-point line. While State College was two for five. And then free throw attempts. Mechanicsburg, four out of six. State College, one out of one. In the turnover department, six for State College so far. Only two for Mechanicsburg. But 11 to five in total rebounds here for State College. Mechanicsburg has not been able to take care of their two-point opportunities. But the one thing in their favor is they just are going to the line of the 101 because State College is over the limit. And State College opened with the 1-3-1 this quarter. Kudovic with his second foul here to start the second quarter. Ed Pekudovic wearing number 11 for State College. So Hovick was having a solid first half here, three out of three for the line. Now has nine points in this one. Looking for number 10 on this trip. And he's up and good for both. Shane Homick and Kyle Scheiber keeping him in the game. So they're hanging around. They're down by three here as we start quarter number two. Skip pass across to Clark. Another skip pass. Now you get a three look from the outside. A beautiful use of the skip pass. And Ryan Scanlon in there knocks down the three for State College. And he was ready to shoot that three. Great zone defense here by State College. They are really bottled up. And every time it goes to the middle, it's a double team. Scanlon, hard move on the other end. Gary, they're suffocating in that zone pressure. So Scanlon comes out and gets five points right away. We've got a timeout for Bob Strickler and the Wildcats. 23-15, State College leads it on High School Sports Live to be on ABC 27. When it comes to a great education, family is everything. At Commonwealth Charter Academy, serving families is our most important job. CCA is a public cyber charter school with year-round open enrollment and no waiting list. CCA brings families and teachers together to meet the unique needs of every child. Students take virtual classes at home, led by Pennsylvania certified teachers. Family members work closely with teachers serving as learning coaches. Learn how CCA can serve your family at CCAeducate.me. Let's head down to Todd McCall and Charlie Forty. They're on the baseline here coming out of the timeout. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Charlie, necessary timeout. Mechanicsburg had to take the thoughts inside the huddle. Strickler does a great job at calling strategic timeouts. And basically, that one right there is important because he says, guys, we're going to we're going to lose. This lead is going to get bigger if we don't start making, taking care of the ball and getting some good shots. Gary, back to you. Mechanicsburg, since they were out to that 8 nothing lead, has out, been outscored 23-7 to by State College. 
And again, they're not able to score deuces right now. Jeff, that really is the big difference in this game. Well, Cade was frustrated early. Now they're going to a 1-3-1 to make sure he's going to stay frustrated. And then until he gets off the snide, uh, Mechanicsburg is going to have a long night. Joe Walker mixing up his zones a little bit, but every time the ball hits middle, they are collapsing like an umbrella. Look at Freiburg handling the basketball. 6-6. He's, he's a point guard. This time it's taken away. Ahead it comes. And in, Mechanicsburg goes for two as Meyernick. Gets the nice outlet pass off the steal, and they claw their way back to a six-point deficit. Look at Scanlon clearing things out here. He wants another three. And here it is. Nice look by Secunda. Will not go. Yanked down again by Mechanicsburg. Here comes Shy. Looks for the pull-up. Doesn't get it. Dive's quickness is unbelievable. On display right now. Back at that 2-3 now. Got a good look. It's not quite going to be the one you want, though. And Alioff has a guy right over his head and take it away. And then Shine comes up with a loose one. Shine puts it in. Cleaning up the loose chains is what we used to say. Kyle Shine with seven points in this one. They've closed to four, his Mechanicsburg. Scandal looking for Freiburg. Freiburg trying to look one on one. Let's it go. Off the iron. Alioff pulls it down. Beautiful rebounds. And a nice job defensively by Marinek on the big guy. Hobbit thought he had one teed up for a moment. Good defense by Scantlin. Back out of Cubs. Will it trigger, Nathan? Oh, no room for that pass. And Holbeck doesn't dive for it. Tell you what, always teach coach, you got to dive for that ball, right? Tommy Freiburg did it. Tommy says, I may have two fouls, but I'm diving after that ball. Oh, you love that, don't you? Todd, you love to see guys on the court, don't you? Well, especially in championship games, but that's the way you play. You play with heart. You get out loose balls. Hey, how many times have we seen them determine who wins a loose ball battle to determine championship games? Well, it sets a tone for the rest of your ball club. One guy diving on the floor. How about man to man this time by State College as they switch it up? Showing you different looks every time down. Hey, Tommy Freiburg is all over Shade Hobbit. Little running one-hander, knock by to go. Clark's got it. He kicks it out. Running ahead is Freiburg. Freiburg to the quarter. He's got his brother over there for the three. Will not go. Alioth jumps back inbound smartly and picks off the ball. Nice contest by Kate Alioth. Get a good look. Buried. Nathan Meyernick. Nathan Meyernick starting to heat up. He's got a three. That's the fourth three of the night for Mechanicsburg. And they are within one here with 4.30 to play in the first half. Don't forget, we've got our high mark halftime report coming up. As checking in right now for Mechanicsburg will be Caleb Everett, the 5'11 junior guard. Stepping out will be Adam Laudenslager. Hey, watch this matchup low. Nathan Marinek on Drew Freiburg. Said this game might be a grinder tonight. It's kind of been that so far. It's like a tractor pull. Oh, and the little hands there. They're going to test out the guy that just came into the game. And you saw that with Caleb Everett, so he'll pick up the foul. His first, oh, the team third now against the Wildcats here in the first half. And Mechanicsburg is badly outsized at every position. A really small team on the floor right now. Kudovic. Play good defense, though, Mechanicsburg. Good, solid man-to-man. -man. Looking to try to get Clark posted up on Alioth down in there. Good block by Alioth. Clark keeps it alive. Secunda running one-hander. He loves that shot. Homick with another rebound. Hey, Homick's doing a real nice job on the boards. Boy, Mechanicsburg just fought him off that time. So the Wildcats hanging in there. 3.39 to go in the half. Don't forget our high mark halftime report coming up. Hovick got a clean look. Will not go. Bakunovic with the rebound. And then an easy layup on transition on the other end by Freiburg. Tommy Freiburg in there with five points. Todd McCall, you can't go for those steals. you got to make sure you stay back to play another day, right, on this shot? you got to keep that player between you and the basket. you got to be between that basket and him. Meyerdick with a little bit of a quick shot that time. State College with a rebound. 
Ryburn, strong move. Will not go. Clark's got it. Clark goes back up. Blocked by Elion. Shibe's got it. Mechanicsburg running. Look at Shibe. And then Elion for the foul. What a play. They always say if you're the trailer, you're chasing it like he's going to miss it. That's what how you get rewarded is Elion for his first points of the game. One point lead for State College. Time out of the four. We'll take one as well. 2.43 to go in the half on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. The Brenner family of dealerships gives you better pricing, better customer service, better selection, and a better service department for the life of your vehicle. We'll show you how at Brenner Chrysler Jeep, Brenner Nissan, and Brenner Pre-Owned. The Brenner family of dealerships on the Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg and on Paxton Street, Harrisburg, 24-7 at BrennerFamily.com. It's better Brenner. Serving Central PA for over 95 years. Hey, it's Team Pennsylvania. Craig Peters have teamed up to create a tremendous opportunity for high school boys basketball players to compete in the Showcase AAU Circuit. Tryouts will be held on March 4th. Go to advancedhoops.com for more information. Gary Sutton, Jeff Thompson, Todd McCall. Let's go to Todd real quickly. Todd, your thoughts on this one? Mechanicsburg showed a lot of boxing right now. Well, there's a lot of heart, but, you know, having played against Coach Bob Strickler many times when I was in Susquehanna Township, what a great coach. Now look at the matchup, possibly a matchup that they slide into. Sometimes it looks like, Gary, the old defense used to play. They'll match up man-to-man on one side of one pass, go back to the zone. And it's causing a little trouble with State College right now. Yeah, it really is. But Kittiksburg showed a lot of heart here, a little outsized. Now a spread offense coming out here for State College out of the timeout. Gary Sutton, Jeff Thompson, Todd McCall with you and our whole Invicta crew led by Chad Edwards. Here's Freiburg. Freiburg looks things over. Boy, is he a heady kid. But Alioff with another rebound. He's been very good on the board so far. That was a great snatch by Cade. And Hobick is going to take the shot, but not before the foul is called. Last lead for Mechanicsburg was 11-10 at the four-minute mark of the first quarter, so it's been a while. But Hobick heads to the line as the foul on State College will be marked up against Brandon Clark. That'll be his first of the game, the eighth. Against the Little Lions, Hobick at the line. Hobick, three out of three, make that four out of four at the line so far tonight. He's got ten points. And Kyle Scheib, shake and bake, we're going to call him. He is really looking effective inside. How about it, Todd? You know, one of the things I give right now, I give the nod to quickness a little bit to Scheib and the guards out of Mechanicsburg right now. They're beating State College up the floor. Hobick misses the shot, but then Alioff gets pushed. And so now Alioff will head to the line. He's nothing out of two there tonight so far. And Coach Harris has both Freiburgs out of the game, which, which is kind of an interesting development in and of itself. That foul on Ryan McNulty, his first team night. So what away from double bonus here in the first half as Alioff lets it go. And he's nothing out of three so far tonight, but Hobick again gets the rebound. Alioff having a tough time offensively. Defensively, he's been very solid on the glass. Deep rebounding. Mechanicsburg tried to get their first lead since the four-minute mark of the first quarter. Shy. Being very patient right now. This defensive state college really stingy in the middle of the court. Shy just kind of like a doctor. He's kind of penetrating. Little backdoor move. Good job. And in for two goes. Number 14, Nathan Meyernick. He's got seven. Nathan's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Good pass with Shive. The lead goes to Mechanicsburg. 26-25, 133 to go. Don't forget we got our high mark halftime report coming up. Clark gets it. Doesn't put it back. Instead, Scanlon does it. Scanlon scores. Ryan Scanlon with his seventh point of the half. Gives State College a lead back. Meyernick downtown. Not going to go. Elioth has it. Elioth back up and in. Uh, that's a tonic right there. Alioff with four points now. And another lead change. Mechanicsburg back on top by one, 105 to go in the half. We got both Freibergs out of the game right now for State College. There's Clark. Let's it go. Will not go. Ellis, rebound. He's going to get fouled. And I don't think they wanted to do that because now Drew's coming back into the game. Ellis with a tough shot there. That's not the kind of shot you want to bail a guy out on. 
Time to call. It looked like Mechanicsburg had, had a pretty good defensive stretch there, and all of a sudden they fouled with a bad shot. Well, yeah, they, 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 they boxed out really well tonight. They missed that box out, and then this is what happens in a foul. I don't know. You know, I thought it was a good challenge on the shot, but I'm not a referee. Here's Ellis, a 74% free throw shooter on the season. It shows you a good stroke, but it will not go. He's got five of this one so far. Out of the game goes McNulty. So you have Scanlon in there now. You got Freiburg back in there. Clark. Ellis. And Secunda. Second one up. Second one good. So Keaton Ellis with six points off the bench. And a foul in the backcourt. And that'll be a double bonus. 28-28. So that means Mechanicsburg is going to stroll to the other end. And Ellis picks up the foul. That'll be his second. I don't know how Kyle split that trap. That was amazing, wasn't it? He's been handling it really well, kind of weaving his way in and out of that defense so far. Don't forget our Highmark, our Highmark halftime report coming up next as Scheib is at the line. And Scheib with the miss. He's a 73% free throw shooter on the season. His first miss tonight, he's two out of three. A lot of intensity. Fatigue may start to play a factor in this game. He's got seven points so far in the first half. Misses both. So a big opportunity here by Mechanicsburg. Missed 46 seconds to go. Mechanicsburg only five out of 12 for the free throw line so far. That's not something Bob Strickland could be really happy about. So now Bukunovic looking things over. We're getting a set play here. Looks like they might be going for one shot, Gary. 28 seconds to go. Now it looks like Mechanicsburg spread it into a zone out of their man-to-man. Kind of an interesting look. Secunda says, just hold on to it. Watch number 14 in the corner. You got Scanlon on the left. You got Secunda on the right. You got Freiburg, Freiburg in the middle. Here you go. 10 seconds. They start to go in. Bakunovic to Secunda. Running one-hander. Won't not go. Secunda comes down with it. Clark gets it back. Clark puts it up. Tap. Freiburg tapped again. Freiburg scores. Drew Freiburg scores at the half. 30-28, State College takes a two-point lead into the half. We'll come back with our Highmark Halftime Report and our Center for Independent Living Halftime Stats Plus Highlights. Now stay tuned for a special presentation with Todd McCall at TPA Supernatural Showcase Boys Basketball. I don't know. Showcase basketball is a necessary tool for young men to play college basketball. Team PA and Team Supernatural have been instrumental in the delivery of getting players to that next level. This spring, we're excited to announce that Team PA and Team Supernatural are partnering to take high school boys showcase basketball to the next level. This partnership will be called Team PA Supernatural. And here to talk about the partnership from Team Supernatural is Coach Craig Peters and from Team PA is Coach Gerald Jarman. Gerald, let's talk a little bit about this partnership it's going to be great for high school level showcase basketball. Yeah, definitely. We're definitely excited about this partnership. Uh, Craig Peters, I've known him for a, a number of years. Uh, we've always collaborated. We've seen each other at different tournaments, and we always talk. He's bringing a level of professionalism. He attracts uh, a lot of the best players from the area. I just think it's going to be a win-win situation for both of us. I'm combining Team PA with Team Supernatural. And Coach Peters, how is this Team Supernatural, Team PA joining up? We want to take you know showcase basketball to the next level. Well, I think this area, first off, is, is hungry for something like this, for a partnership like this, with, with Gerald and Team PA's expertise, with um, some of my college connections, some of my coaching ability. We're going to take these kids to the next level. We're going to showcase them at all the high-caliber high events, events like the Pit Jam Fest, AC Live in Atlantic City, and possibly the Fab 48 in Las Vegas. So if you're a high school player out there, showcase basketball, Team PA Supernatural, tryouts March 4th at 7 o'clock. If you want information, go to advancedhoops.com. Groff Tractor is your full line equipment dealer representing Case Construction and many other leading brands, serving the total sales, rental, parts, and service needs of its customers. Groff Tractor paves the way for your projects from start to finish. With 11 locations, Groff Tractor is always close by your equipment needs. Groff also offers 24-7 field service. Groff Tractor is your number one source for everything under construction.
Welcome back to our Highmark Halftime Report here. It's 30-28 to 28 at the half. State College leads it, courtesy of Drew Freiberg's tipping at the half. Let's take a look at our advanced hoops first half highlights. They started out quick here, Jeff Thompson, with Hovick knocking down the three. He had a couple threes early and, it, and set, the, set the tone. Eight nothing lead coming out of the gate, but then State College steadied themselves, mostly on the hand of this guy, Tommy Secunda, who went to the basket early and often and also showed you he could nail it downtown as well with that three. Oh, he enjoyed scoring, didn't he? Freiburg had it knocked away, some pretty pesky defense here from Mechanicsburg, and then turned it in as Byerneck on the other end. And then you see Scheib kicking off Byerneck with a hot hand here, rattles another one down. Scheib had a great first half handling the basketball. Alioth with a good follow on that one. It almost looked like he passed the ball to Cade. And then to Byerneck again, on a nice back door, getting it with the easy bucket, and it's 30 28 here at the half. Our Center for Independent Living halftime stats here. Let's take a look at them. Five of 19 from two-point line here for Mechanicsburg. Nine of 25 for State College. Both these teams playing really good defense, and it's showing up with not some real great numbers from twos. But in three-point land, four out of nine for Mechanicsburg, three out of eight for State College. Not bad numbers. That's a wash. You look at five out of 12 from free throw line, though. Two out of three for State College. That five out of 12 could come back to haunt Mechanicsburg. It could haunt them, and they, and they got State College in the bonus early, and they didn't really take advantage of it. It rebounds. Mechanicsburg did a better job in the second quarter. 19-15, State College leads in that department. And then 7-3 to three in turnovers. State College, more turnovers than Mechanicsburg so far. But State College with the narrow lead here at the half, 30-28. to 28. We'll come back with more of our Highmark Halftime Report right after this on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. No regrets. If only she'd parked in a garage. If only they had the chimney cleaned. If only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened. At rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Your local Erie agent is Capital Region Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 717-731-1142. The Advanced Hoops training staff features Division I level instructors and coaches who have played professionally. Charlie Fortney's shooting instruction has proven transformational for players in South Central PA. Gerald Jarman takes players to the next level in his dribbling and crossover intensity classes. Archie Smith teaches intense speed and agility and is very motivational. 6'9", Duke McCamey is excellent at teaching young post player technical skills around the basket. Over 30 years of Division I and professional experience, it doesn't get any better than that. For all those pokers, prodders, shuckers, and sniffers, all giant produce is triple checked. Farm, crate, and store. We're focusing on fresh, so you don't have to guess. My Giant. Save big on all of your game day favorites. Only a Giant, a proud sponsor of High School Sports Live. Welcome back to our High Mark Halftime Report. Gary Sutton here with you, the coach Jeff Thompson. Jeff, it was an interesting first half. Uh, a lot of ebbs and flows. It, it was. I thought the defense was the name of the game for both teams in the first half. Mechanicsburg did a nice job out of their man-to-man. I thought State College switching up their man-to-man at a couple different kinds of zones, really effective for them. Well, it was a defensive first half. Both clubs, that's the trademark of both clubs. I'm really impressed because State College is a one fine ball club. Mechanicsburg's hanging right there. And if not for those two foul shots at the end, probably would have a lead. You look at Mechanicsburg so far, too. Alioth has not really got very far off the side so far. I think he's going to get neutralized a lot by Freiburg inside. But he's holding his own at the defensive glass. And I thought... If he can get into the game a little bit for Mechanicsburg, that would bring another feature that they don't have right now, which is the inside presence. Well, a lot of times as the game flows on, people start to emerge. What, what would concern me from Mechanicsburg is State College is really good at winning close games. Yeah, they seem to make a habit of that. And all year long, they've kind of walked along the uh, mind path there in the, what is known as the Commonwealth Division, winning close game after close game after close game. You look at this State College team, they really are an interesting club. They're very long. They're very lanky. You look at Freiburg, who you think maybe would be a post-up guy, but he's a point guard. And, Might be their and, most effective point guard. And, and then you got Secunda, and Freiburg really hasn't gotten on track yet offensively when you think about it. Uh, I think Mechanicsburg is paying special attention to Drew. 
And that's why Tommy and that's why both Tommies have had chances to go to the basket. I'll be interested to see how well the two coaches maybe start to involve their inside game in the second half. Most of what we have seen in the first half, I thought, was guard-oriented. And so will they get the big guys involved more here in the second half because they seem to be having their own little personal war without the basketball down in there? That's an interesting perception. Scanlon hits those threes. Meanwhile, Drew and uh, Cade are just battling like crazy. Yeah, so they're battling away on the inside. Then it's a four-on-four game elsewhere. And it's just been a really interesting look here in the first half. Uh, not a lot of transitions. More threes than I thought we would see here tonight. There's really been a lot of threes in this game so far for these two teams that don't traditionally live off that, which tells you about how badly that inside game is being neutralized. I, I totally agree. This is a difficult arena to shoot because it's so wide open, yet a lot of threes have been hit tonight. We're going to take a break here from our Highmark Halftime Report. Thank you for joining us for that. We're getting ready for the second half, 30-28. to 28. State College leads here at the half. And when we come back, we'll head to Todd McCall on the sideline. He's got the cheerleaders from Mechanicsburg with a very, very special cheer. He'll be back with that right after this. This is High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Did you know all electronics must be recycled? It's the law. But more importantly, it's the right thing to do. At the Recycling Center, Dauphin County residents can recycle older broken TVs, computers, cell phones, laptops, major appliances, even paper. The Recycling Center is conveniently located on Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It makes recycling fast, safe, and simple. Stop by the Dauphin County Recycling Center today and help us recycle the right way. Well, welcome back. Close game here. State College, Mechanicsburg State College holds on to two. High School Sports Live and Central PA Food Bank have been teaming up with the Capital Area Cheerleaders. And tonight, the Mechanicsburg staff, cheerleading staff, are going to talk a little bit about fighting hunger with this cheer. We're going to let the Mechanicsburg girls take this away. Go ahead, Wildcats. Take away for the Central PA Food Bank and your fight to, to cure hunger. Excuse me. Okay, we're about ready to start the second half. Teams are getting ready in the huddle. Pretty exciting basketball game so far, wouldn't you say, Gary? So we are ready to tee this one up here in the second half, 30 to 28. Uh, Jeff, what what would you say to your team here coming out in the second half to either team? First of all, Mechanicsburg. Well, Mechanicsburg, keep doing it. I thought Nathan got some confidence, so now they have four players involved in the mix. Body playing some pretty good defense. Keep playing tough on the boards. And how about State College? State College, do your thing. Look at your pressure. Go to the hole. Sounds pretty simple to me. Seven lead changes in the first half, two ties. Uh, and we'll see what uh, happens here as we let the second half underway. Get it underway. Good post up on Secunda. And Secunda gets doubled up. And right away, Mechanicsburg with a good defensive possession. Gary, and you called that. They tried to go inside right away, and they got thwarted. I think everybody was on the same page there, the defense and the offense. Everybody knows where it was going. Now when you come back on the other end, do the Wildcats try to go to Aliot? Well, they got to get past this pressure first. Got a little uh, kind of a matchup. Looks like it's going to be a 1-2-2 eventually, but right now they're matching up everywhere. Good tough press. You got shot in the corner. Might need a timeout. And he does. They make a waste of timeout right there. Nice call. Off the double team. We'll take one as well. It's 30-28. State College leads it on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Look, Ryan. Shh. Look over there. I see it. I see it. Is that what I think it is? That's a beauty. Wait, wait. Look. There's an even bigger one. Oh, wow. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, man. Don't worry, buddy. I know where there's a whole herd of them. Hoffman has them, so be sure to stop by to save a lot of bucks. So there you see the Mechanicsburg Wildcats pretty fired up right now or thinking things over and hoping his team can uh, maybe get over the top here. Had a heck of a cat fight here so far tonight. We said it was going to be like a tractor pull tonight, and it's been exactly that so far. Great defense on both sides, and here we go again with pressure. 
two teams that are primarily half-court teams as they break the pressure here. Nice job bringing Alioth up to be the pressure release point. That was the key, wasn't it? I've really been impressed with the game Shive has played tonight at the point guard spot. He has expended a lot of energy just handling the basketball against his pressure. Showcasing his ball ability. Going to do a little motion here. Alioth. I think they're looking for him right now. Being very patient. Yeah, that defense just will not let you get in. You know, what they remind you of a little bit, State College, is that pack line defense you watch Virginia play. Who, by the way, lost to my Dukies last night by 10. But uh, they Good play analogy. that pack line defense where they just don't let you penetrate. They just collapse on you like an umbrella. Very similar game to UVA. Keep looking for that back door to Secunda off that one four. Good hands by Kyle. And Alioth picks it up, and then it's going to be stolen back. I think you're going to get a foul on Clark right here. Kyle, has, Kyle showed some really quick hands. I don't know if you guys saw that at home. Wow. Randy Clark picks up his second foul. I think that Freiburg actually is going to pick up the foul. So here comes Scheib. Inside it goes. There you go. Kick in, hold it, comes out, right up the lane, easy bucket. What a nice pass by Cade. How unselfish was that? They double teamed down on Alley at that time, and right through the lane went Hobick for two. Like butter on hot bread. Hobick now with 12 points, and then the three from downtown. Drew Freiburg. He says the game's tied, it's my turn. He steps up, he's got 10 points tonight. And then the steal very quickly by Mikunovic. And just like that, 35-30 as the defense turns it over for State College. Pull up, Meyer Nick, not going to go. Rebound, Aliyev. Aliyev up strong, he gets fouled again by Clark. What a nice rebound by Cade, and, and he needed it then. It looks to me like Aliyev is thinking about who's around him when he's going back up to shoot, though. He looks like he's tentative just a bit from where I'm sitting. Well, he probably should be. He's never seen this many big bodies in one game. Let's head to Todd McCall. He's wandering on the baseline right now. I think right now you kind of mentioned it, Gary. Just Ali needs to just settle himself and go back up like he's been doing all along in the Keystone. And I think he'll get in the groove here in the second half. He's got five points right now looking for number six here. That's his first free throw of the night he's made. And next second one rattles out again. He's missed four of them tonight so far. One out of five. It's been their Achilles heel. He really has. Ludovic passes up the shot. Tommy. Tommy Freiburg. Was Secunda, Secunda misses it, and Alioth with another rebound. I love the way he rebounds. A spread eagle look there. Here's Shive going to the basket. Going to get fouled. Todd, I thought Shive set that up so good with a change of pace there and got Pekunovic off balance. He does it so well. He's quick, he stops, he pauses, and then he managed to get a shot off, even when it looked like it was an impossible shot to go the under and almost converted on the end one. Pekunovic with his third foul here. And it was a no-question foul. He, he, he hit him pretty hard. Shy at the line, converts. He's got eight points in this one tonight. One out of three for the line so far this evening. Make that two out of three, rather. Shy tries to pull his team to within two. Can't do it. Another rebound by Alioth. Alioth can't get it to go. Hobbit gets it. Shy gets it back under control. Uh, we're going to get another foul, and it's going to be called on Clark. So Brandon Clark, shy with a heady play there, and Clark has three fouls. That was an excellent play to draw that foul. Fired it. Did he get it? That's wasn't really set, and Alioth goes after him. Was on the baseline. Meyerdick just looked really, really tentative right there. Three-point lead right now for State College, and they've got the basketball. I was talking to a Mechanicsburg fan here at that. Mickey Geldet, who I played golf with in college, stopped by here at the half. Former basketball player, a very good golfer. He said, man, we thought maybe we were going to get blown out here tonight in State College. Not happening so far. Good rebound there by Bakunovic. Freiburg. Scaling, scaling again, and you're going to get a push from the backside on Shy. Well, he wanted to use his body, but the number five is a little too big. 
Let's take a look at our camera guys here. Taking a couple for the team. Our Vika crew, and that's what it looks like coming right into the camera. Right in your living room. Good block by Elliott to not going to do enough as the ball is put away. <laughs> and that's better. And you're going to get a player control foul here against Mechanicsburg. And just feel momentum is wearing a white uniform right now, Todd McCall. I tell you, you know, I don't know. It's, it's tough. It's Shrive going hard. Guys are playing hard. The intensity of the game's picking up. That was a quick call. For That's only the fourth turnover of the game now for Mechanicsburg. They, they played play a clean game, haven't they? They really they? have. And that call could have gone either way, actually. Tommy Sakud down here, you see number 33, has verbally committed to go to seat Hill this past Sunday. Seton Hill University. So the foul is called here. And at the line, Keaton Ellis. Ellis, 74% on the season, checks in with point number seven tonight. Keaton's done a really nice job coming off the bench. Only averages five points a game. He's got seven tonight, so he's beating his numbers. And State College starting to take control of this game here at the moment. I'll check that. Keaton did start. So eight points in the game. And the pressure from State College is the difference here in the third quarter. Oh, nice touch. And, oh, it's missed again by Aliot. Man, you couldn't have gotten a better pass. Shot dished it off, and Aliot just missing the duck. Here comes Ellis. He's got his man. So cut down for three. And that's a that's an early dagger. That's a big one right now. The pressure is on. Look out. That's a good one. Jumping up there to see. I Bob Strickland's going to get a timeout right here. 42-32. State College has jumped out big. We'll take a break. High School Sports Live to be on ABC 27. These past few years have been tough on all of us. You worry about the economy, your job, your savings. You may even have given up on your dream of owning your own home. But don't give up just yet. We're PHFA. We help people realize their dreams of owning their own home with features like competitive interest rates, down payment and closing cost assistance, and even free home ownership counseling. PHFA can make your dream of home ownership finally come true. Find us on the web or call us to find out how. I'm Brian Hudson, and we're PHFA. Welcome home. Advanced Hoops will be hosted AAU tryouts starting this February. Tryouts will be conducted for 4th through 12th grade teams. Advanced Hoops will also be offering 3D trading for those looking to add new dimensions to their game this offseason. For more information, go to advancedhoops.com. Gary Sutton, Jeff Thompson, Tom McCall. With you. Let's go to Tom McCall. He's down on the baseline. The State College's pressure is really starting to pay off, Todd. Well, it got relentless, and they're tough to see over. Now, Kyle Shrive has done a great job breaking the press himself, but at this point in time, they're swarming everybody, in, in, swarming all over the place, and McKingsburg made some tough decisions with the ball. State College on a 12-4 run this quarter. This is their largest lead of the game at 10 points. Jeff, uh, if you're Mechanicsburg, it's the moment of truth right here. you got to step up and make this possession count. It sure is, and they had a nice look last time. As you said, Kyle made a nice pass to Cade. It just didn't go down. Here they go along right away to Cade. Alioff gets it, puts it in. Nice job. Beating the pressure that time, and Alioff out of the break gets an easy bucket. There's your answer. There's a partial answer. Oh, Keaton Ellis, strong man. And right on the other end, out of bounds is Scandal, but Ellis comes right back with the answer, doesn't he? And uh, Cade's down. He, he might have gotten knocked out on that play, on that drive by Ellis. So Cade Alioff on the floor right now. Let's take a look at that last play if we can again. As Ellis, with a hard drive to the basket, goes up strong. And then I think he must have gotten him in the face just on his follow-through on the shot. Yeah, you got him early. But Keith Nellis, hard drive to the basket. He's got 10 points tonight. As Kate Alley out on the floor, we'll take a quick break. We'll come right back. It's 44-34. State College leads it. 3.43 to go in the third on High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. Today's Advanced Hoops tip will feature Archie Smith. 
our speed and agility expert. The block jumping drill is meant to develop the fast twitch jumping muscles in a young player's legs. This drill forces a player to jump constantly and should be fast paced while clearing the block every time. Players will develop explosive jumping skills doing this and it trains a player's body to jump quicker and have the endurance needed to jump in game situations. The block jumping drill is one fundamental a player will learn in my class. Back to High School Sports Live TV. Let's head down to the baseline where Charlie Fortney and Todd McCall are there while Kate Alioth being checked over right now with the injury. Todd? Right now we got Kate Alioth down. We've got Charlie Fortney here. Charlie, your thoughts here in the second half of this game? Well, if Cade doesn't come back, uh, that's bad news for the Kansas but Cade Alioth has had so many altered shots in this game. He has kept Mechanicsburg in this game, him and Shive and Hamek. The seniors are just doing a job. It's going to be an interesting stretch here. This is a key moment in the game. All right, back to you guys at the bench, Gary. So with Alioth goes out of the gymnasium and heads off to the locker room. So now if you're State College, do you go to work on the inside here with no Alioth down there to battle against you? There's Shive. He gets blocked, and it looks like it's going to be on Secunda. So Shive attacks the basket. Secunda picks up the foul. I was saying it, maybe it's me that has to do this. Now Cade here. It might have to be Kyle. It's been a guard-oriented attack tonight so far for Mechanicsburg as heading to the line is Kyle Shive. He's four out of six there tonight. It buries this one. Sorry, apparently missed the first shot. Second shot, up and good. So Sean converts. Now, what, I'm, what I'm looking for is State College to just go directly inside. Sean with eight points in this game so far. 3.37 to go here in the third quarter. Mechanicsburg kind of hanging on right now. Alioff out of the gym for the moment. They went inside, just threw it away, so... Mechanicsburg gets lucky. Mechanicsburg, 8 out of 18 for the free throw line. Hobick hasn't shot it in a while. Misses it there. He started out the game with two threes. Here's Secunda. Nice defense by Shane. Secunda lets it go. Downtown Secunda. Better offense by Secunda. On fire. Secunda with another three. He's got 16 in this one. Biggest lead of the night. Another answer, though, by Meyerdick on the other end to keep Mechanicsburg hanging around. Meyerdick with his second three. He's got ten. And then Boyd in and off the glass. No good. Fair control foul against Fiber. What a nice play by Jason Kaczynski. New into the game. Took that charge. Kaczynski with a great job getting it there. That's a third foul now on Fiber. And Tyler Gelnett is in the game as a big man. Tyler Gelnick, son of Lance Gelnick, great player for Millersville University, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Oh, man, look at the move by Scheib here. He's going to lose control, but I think. They're nope. calling a timeout. They'll call a timeout. Bob Strickler bails him out with a timeout. 2.37 to go in the third. Nine-point lead for State College on High School Sports Live TV. It's ABC 27. Groff Tractor is your full-line equipment dealer, representing Case Construction and many other leading brands serving the total sales, rental, parts, and service needs of its customers. Groff Tractor paves the way for your projects from start to finish. With 11 locations, Groff Tractor is always close by your equipment needs. Groff also offers 24-7 field service. Groff Tractor is your number one source for everything under construction. Everything. Let's go down to Todd McCall right now, who's on the baseline. Todd, uh... Thoughts on this one. Alioth out of the game. State College certainly with advantage right now. We have the advantage uh, really height-wise. But you know what I like? I like Kyle Schwab still getting to the line. I'm anxious to see what Coach Strickler and the staff will do coming out of this timeout. They'll have the ball underneath their basket. And let's see if they set up any kind of pressure of their own. Gary? What's interesting so far, the free throw line has been the big number that stands out tonight against Mechanics. We're only 8 of 18 for the free throw line. You're down by nine points. And Willis Reed's back in the game. There you go. So Alioff is back in there now. He comes in, set piece. Alioff up and in and gets fouled. Welcome back, Kate Alioff. What a tough bucket that was. Look at this. They went back. He set the screen, then he rolled to the basket off the set piece. 
Came right off the screen by Hobick. And then Aliyah finishes off the three-point play and says, I'm back. Ten points of the game now for Alioff, and back to a six-point lead now for State College, and they have to try to answer. 2.25 to go in the third. Keaton Ellis going strong to the hole. Ellis with a pull-up, not going to go, and there's Scheib again. Scheib has impressed me at the point guard spot today, both he and Ellis. Scheib looking downtown. Scheib can't get it to go, though. Pulled down by Freiburg. He's running. Kicks it off to Secunda. Secunda banks it. Not going to go. Nice rebound. Yanked down by Mechanicsburg. Jason Kaczynski again. Hey, Kaczynski getting some big moments in here right now for the Wildcats. And that'll be the eighth foul again this half against State College. They have been foul prone here tonight thus far. They're, they're a physical ball club, and, and I think Kyle Schaub's made a lot of that happen himself. That'll be the second foul now on Max Better. So at the line is Kaczynski. Kaczynski on the season, a 50% free throw shooter. And it rolls around but will not go. Freiburg looks inside to Drew Freiburg. He gets open. He's going to get fouled. And I'm surprised Drew hasn't done more of that this evening. Very tough put in the post up. So inside it went that time to Freiburg. We might see a big dose of Freiburg inside for the rest of the game. So Freiburg at the line. Easy stroke for the big guy. Drew Freiburg tonight so far. Four out of four out of five for the line. He's got eleven points in this one. Looking for his second effort right here. 74% shooter on the season varies both. So Freiburg, with a bit of 42 to go, extends the lead back to eight. Boy, Kyle's just pushing the ball out and chasing it down. Baseline it goes. Alioff has it, gets stymied there by Freiburg. Hobick had it for a moment. Long walk, downtown will not go. Meyernick's on it. Meyernick puts it back. He cleans it up. Meyernick's Johnny on the spot. Stole it away. Hovick makes a move. Hovick, hard move up. In. Unbelievable shot. There's your play of the game from Hovick. He had some French pastry on the end of that move. Did he ever? 14 points now for Hovick in this one. Big night. So it's back to four now. And you're going to see a home going through the lane against State College. It's going to be against Lee Cadilla, who's into the game. And Cadilla. That was, an, that was an easy call for the official. So nine fouls here, and we're not to the fourth quarter yet for State College. That's a huge number. Hovick, here comes a trap again. To Shive it goes. Shive sees a chance to go through. We'll kind of lose his way. He'll be called for the player control foul. That'll be the second on Shive. Kind of got lost in there, I think. Got it between thoughts. Well, he was very aggressive going down, and I thought he stopped, but the, Penn, the State College player made a nice play, and that he, uh, the State College player had just turned the ball over. Kaczynski back in for Scheib here. And Scheib actually with his third foul now, so Bob Strickland takes him out for the moment. And gets him a little rest. He's worked hard out there today. Freiburg, baseline, will not go. Rebound by his brother, Tommy. Here comes Ellis. Ellis kicks a quarter. Wide open shot by Mushinsky. It will not go. And pulled down by Mechanicsburg. Loudenslager on the rebound. 24 seconds to go. Down four. Chain taken over at point guard, Shane Homick. 14 seconds to go. Bob Strickler calling a set piece he wants. 10 seconds. You start throwing it down. Here comes a pick and roll. They got Hovick wide open on the corner. Will it go? No. And it goes out of bounds with 1.2 seconds to go here in the quarter. State College will have the basketball. Nothing long. They put Alioth right up there on the ball to make this pass way up in the air. They got Secunda against Hovick down the other end. You don't want to foul. 
And that ends the third quarter, 49-45. We head to the fourth. State College leads it by four on High School Sports Live TV at ABC 27. The Brenner family of dealerships gives you better pricing, better customer service, better selection, and a better service department for the life of your vehicle. We'll show you how at Brenner Chrysler Jeep, Brenner Nissan, and Brenner Pre-Owned. The Brenner family of dealerships on the Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg and on Paxton Street, Harrisburg, 24-7 at BrennerFamily.com. It's better Brenner. Serving Central PA for over 95 years. Advanced Hoops at TPA are looking for a few more qualified AAU basketball coaches. Anyone interested in applying to coach a top-notch boys or girls AAU team, there are openings to do so at the high school level. Call Advanced Hoops at 717-657-2620. Ask for Ryan. That's Ryan Shipper. State College has it. The four-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter on this Mid-Pen Championship. We've got a ways to go yet. as a walk call on Ellis. He needed an advantage to take K to the hole, and he didn't get it. Third quarter, one for six and three-point field goals compared to 3.5 for State College at Mechanicsburg. Five out of 12, though, from two-point line. Wherever that two-point line ended up being, 12 turnovers for State College in this game right now. Here's Homer. Homer goes hard to the basket, has it blocked by Secunda. And Homer is going to head to the line. Looked like a little bit of an early whistle there. Well, I think they anticipated that. Yeah, I think so, too. Secunda looked to his coach at, in disbelief, but... If you go strong to the hole, sometimes you get rewarded. For Secunda, that's his second foul. So here's Hobick back at the line again. Hobick, sweet stroke tonight. 15 points in the game for Shane Hobick having a game of his life tonight here at the mid pet Championship. And Hobick again, up, good. Nice release. Wildcats pulled in two. 7.41 to go in this one. We got a Cat fight coming down the stretch. I've been pretty impressed with the way interior defensive mechanics with the whole game, but look at this. Oh, and a block by Alia. Freiburg goes down. That was Mano Mano. He said, not in my house. Well, Freiburg looked like he had an open lane to the basket, and all of a sudden Alia came up from the backside and just tried to block it away, but got him with the body down low. You know, if you're playing outside in the streets, you can't call that foul. They right, got him down low. So here's Freiburg back at the basket. And Freiburg missing the shot. 11 points for Freiburg. Todd, I'm not so sure the fatigue's not starting to set in a little bit here in this tractor pull. Uh, you know what? You're seeing a little bit, especially when it comes to the foul line where you need your legs. You need that strength in the fourth quarter. Second shot up and good for Freiburg. Nice play by Shane. Freiburg with 11 points in this one, by the way. Meyerdick wisely pulls it back out, tries to get it back into Shibes' hands. Three-point lead for State College. Look at Shibes looking off. And there again, Shibes got down in amongst the trees and wasn't quite sure where he wanted to go with a good double team by the Freiburg brothers. Lost in the forest. Never go into the forest unless you know where you're going to get out. So, big moment here again. Mechanicsburg has crawled the mountain, but they're down by three here to Secunda. He wants, he's, he wants to go to the basket. Every time he gets you, you can just see him hunting for a shot. They all do, don't they? A little push off there by Ellis, not called. Clark, wide open at the foul line. Clark buries it. Nice flash by Brandon Clark. Nice play by Kyle to draw that one. He's going to shoot two. So, now... The double bonus with 6.46 to go in the game. Advantage at the foul line belongs to Mechanicsburg. The problem is the results of the foul line tonight so far have not been very good. And that is a problem. Keaton Ellis looked, making sure all his teeth are in his mouth right now. And he got called for the foul. It, 
that is the fourth foul on Ellis, so he's going to have to go out of the game here as Bukudovic back in the game for Ellis. Five-point lead for State College. Shy buries it. Tommy thought about it. So a four-point lead right now for the Little Lions. Eli hits the post. Here you go to Secunda. Set piece that time. Secunda answers the bell. Eighteen points in the game for Secunda. Look for Alioff. Alioff goes up inside, lets it go kind of beakly that time. He didn't know whether to go glass or straight in, and he didn't either. Yeah, the, the shots that he's trying to take right now are not strong shots. They don't have a lot of positive momentum going up to the glass. You're, you're saying, coaches, go to the basket hard. Yep, make them have to play you. Here goes Freiburg. He's going to get called for a foul out front. As Meyerdick is trying to say there was a moving screen there, the official saw it differently as Meyerdick will get called for the foul from Mechanicsburg. Todd, this game is getting to be really, really physical down the stretch. It is, and I, I think it really started out with that way, that type of that type of physicalness now, but I think it's really, uh, you know, stepped up to a championship-type caliber with the physicalness. Freiburg back at the line. He'll bury it. A college has a, many more big bodies, though, in this war of attrition. Dozen points now for Freiburg. Drew Freiburg, second shot up. Good. So Freiburg with a dozen. Meyerdick, going to get trapped, has to watch himself here. Throws it over the top to Hobick, and Hobick's going to get fouled. And that's on Clark. So a lot of fouls here. The game becoming very, very static, and Clark picks up his fourth foul. State College has made a living on this half-court trap, but Mechanicsburg's handling it well. So if you want a guy at the line tonight, this is the guy you want there. It's Hovick. He's only just one all night long. 17 points tonight for Shane Hovick. What a beautiful shot he has. Looking for number 18 right here. I think he learned that from uh, Charlie Fortney. Trying to put his team down by six now. Hovick's second shot up. Good. Nothing but that. He's got 18. Don't forget we've got our OSS Health Post Game Report coming up at the end of this one. Six-point lead. State counts. Long look. Downtown. Not going to go. Shine's got it. He's running. He's one of one with Bakunovic. Goes up hard. That's going to be a goal goaltender. Should have been goaltender. Yep. There's the call. No matter because Cade was there for a follow if it didn't get called. So a hard move there as Bob Strickler goes out and kind of beckons his team to call. Here you go. You see it up. Now the ball on its way down. And you saw the tip right there. So Scheib with another big bucket here. Ten points of the game for Scheib. Freiburg wide open. Tipped away. Freiburg back up. He's going to be tied up again. Tied up again. Now foul call, I think, on Hovick. Wow, Drew, Drew was relentless working for that ball. So Hovick called for the foul. That'll be his third. Let's get out of Todd McCall down there. He's in the middle of all this busted going on underneath the basket, Todd. Kind of have a little mic problem right now. So Freiburg, Drew Freiburg down the stretch here, getting his free throws. Really the only difference in the game as I see it. 14 points now for Freiburg. Looking for number 15 on this trip, and there it is. So as they usually do, Freiburg and Secunda leading the scoring here for State College tonight. And State College called off the dogs in their press that time. 33 out of the 58 points coming from those two. Big possession here. Five minutes to go. Meyerdick. Finds a way to get it down. It's worth two, though. What a nice pass by Shane Homick. So Meyerdick with another deuce. 
The mechanics were heavy underdogs coming into this game. 14 for Meyerdick tonight. Now they're posted up Secunda against Hovick. And a walk on Secunda. Another turnover against State Cow. It's four-point lead, 439 to play. Tied out on the floor. We'll take one as well. Let's wait and see. The arms got tangled over there by the State College bench. We got a timeout. We'll take it. This is High School Sports Live TV at ABC 27. Today's advanced hoops tip will feature Archie Smith. Fasten your seatbelt. To become a top defensive player, you need proper lateral technique. The cone-to-cone lateral slide drill will help a player practice getting quicker. It's important to keep the feet wide while the player is in a sit-down position with the back upright. When sliding back and forth, avoid crossing the feet or bringing feet together. Be focused on short, choppier steps. The lateral cone drill is just one fundamental a player will learn in my class. 13 turnovers for State College today compared to, I believe, four for Mechanicsburg. Uh, and that's been a huge difference in this game as well as the foul line. Mechanicsburg not taking advantage of their uh, free throws. Let's go to Todd McCall. He's on the baseline. Todd. And I think Todd is getting a new battery right now. We have six turnovers against Mechanicsburg tonight. I stand corrected. And really the difference in the game, State College 11 for 13 from the line. Mechanicsburg. Missed 14 foul shots. There you go. Mechanicsburg like 8 out of, or 10 out of 18 now, I believe, or 10 out of 20 so far. So now it doesn't matter what the numbers are. It's four and a half minutes to go. It becomes a coach's game. And every foul shot now, we'll see what you can do under pressure. Hobbit gets it into Aliot. Kicks a quarter. Meyerd, can he do it again? Not this time. Rebound goes to Sekunda. And a foul on Meyerdick. Every rebound is, is a secure rebound, and they're, they're battling so hard underneath. Shot might have been rushed just a little bit there, I think, from Meyerdick when they got it down, but he had an open look. And he's had the magic so far tonight. He has. Well, here is Freiburg, not the guy you want back at the line if you're Mechanicsburg. Freiburg has been tough here down the stretch. Four in a row so far. Or, excuse me, Secunda, rather. Secunda's only been there one time. He's one out of one. Make it two out of two. And he looks smooth on that one. Mechanicsburg does not have to panic. They can take their time, Gary, and you're exactly right. That may have been a rush shot. 19 points now for Secunda. They <laughs> say college shoots their fouls. They have well all year. 20 points for Secunda this one. Here's Shad. Beat the pressure against Makunovic. Pulls it out. Tried to find Holbeck. Al Scheib looks like Marcus Haynes, doesn't he? Oh, he's played inside the Aliath up. Good job that time of waiting for Freiburg. They went right into his face. Aliath in for 11 points. Now make it 12. A dozen of the game for Kate Aliath. Nice pump fake inside. Back to a four-point lead. Both these teams right on the average they score during the course of the season right now. State College has led virtually the whole way with just a moment's difference in the third quarter. Now you're going to get a foul called away from the ball. Adam Laudenslag repeating his case. And he fouls Tommy Freiburg. So Freiburg has led both teams now in the double bonus. And I always think that the double bonus just makes everybody better in terms of shooting free throws, more comfortable. Tommy Freiburg is five out of five for the line tonight. Not too shabby. He does not have a field goal this evening. This is all, all his points coming from the free throw line. Make it six out of six. And that's where they win games at the end. That's why they're such a good finishing team. They are just dynamite. Here's a huge possession coming up for Mechanicsburg. Under four minutes to play. They're looking for Allianz. I'll tell you what. This young man's going to sleep well tonight. Shy. He has been worming his way through. There's a timeout called, I think. Oh, wait, see. Foul's going to be called against State College. Shy's going to be at the line for two. I don't know how he got that two foul shot foul. He just relentless going to the hole. Akunovic now with four fouls. Shy, again, missing. Big misses here. 
Shimes played an outstanding game tonight. So Kyle Scheib gets another look here, try to get his team to within five. He'll make the second one. A lot of time left. A dozen points for Scheib in this one. Five point lead for State College. What a kind of a modified flex offense here. Secunda lets it go. Look out! Secunda for a big three. And that's a the dagger. second dagger he's hit. Eight point lead now for State College. There goes Hobick. Hobick gets it blocked away by Clark. 3.09 to go in this one. The Little Lions with a lead. Good defense. Don't foul Mechanicsburg. Let's see right now if they start to work the clock a little bit. It might be a little early for that. Certainly they won't be in a hurry taking that shot, will they? Clark misses it. Rebound goes to Alion. Well, I'm surprised at that shot. Yeah, I thought maybe they'd wait and try to get the layup. Big three. Not going to go. Rebound, Freiburg. Don't foul him. And it comes to Clark. Clark kicks it wide. Tommy Freiburg has it. Now you're going to start to see them play the clock a little bit, I think. One would think. You don't need any outside shot right now. Joe Walker. Scream it out to his charges. There goes Ellis. Kicks a quarter. Oh. Secunda says, I got the hot hand. Another three from Secunda. Who do you think our Brenner player of the game might be tonight? <laughs> Elliot. Nice back. That's a good question. <laughs> it's an easy answer. Secunda early, Freiburg, and Secunda. Secunda early and Secunda late. Secunda has really been the answer tonight, especially when they needed big buckets here in the last few minutes. State College just knows how to win games. They're a very good team. Well, I'll tell you what. You watch Secunda get the ball every time. You know, Charlie Fortney sitting here next to me. You talk about a guy that wants to score every time he handles a basketball. Secunda is looking. He puts pressure on you every time it touches his hands. That's the way Charlie used to play. Alioff converts the three-point play to keep Mechanicsburg hanging around, down by eight. They're going to need a stop. So there's a foul out front. And in there to give the foul right now is Kaczynski. You're going to roll the dice here with Ellis. Strictly offense, defense right now is where Bob Stricker is going to try to go. Try to go. So Ellis heads to the line. Keith Dallas, a 74% free throw shooter. He's not missed there tonight. He's three out of three. And you can see a sweet stroke right there coming down the stretch. And this is where money time is for State College. They do it every single time in close games. 12 points tonight for Ellis. Looking for number 13 here. He's had a real nice game, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has. A little bit of foul trouble has been saddled with tonight. But overall, and just smooth. The free throw line is the difference in this game tonight. Uh, totally. Two really good teams competing really hard. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a really good game. Really impressed with Mechanicsburg. Really impressed with State College. Got to get a few threes up now. Down by 10. There goes Shy. And it's stolen away by Freiburg. Meyerdick tried to foul him. Freiburg hanging on to it. Timeout going to be called, I think, by Coach Walker. We'll take it as well. 70 to 60, 124 to go. 124 away from a mid pen championship for State College, but still some basketball to be played on High School Sports Live TV. No regrets. If only she'd parked in a garage. If only they had the chimney cleaned. If only they had Erie Insurance. Erie is seriously good insurance that treats you fairly and goes above and beyond to make you feel like your auto or home mishap never happened at rates that'll save you as much as the other guys. So get a quote from Erie today. Because whatever your regrets in life, your insurance company shouldn't be one of them. Your local Erie agent is Capital Region Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 717-731-1142. Welcome back to Spartan Hall here. 
Don't forget, we've got our OSS Health Post Game Report coming up. We'll feature the Capital Region Insurance Agency's Play of the Game and the Brenner Family of Dealerships Player of the Game. And the free throw line has been the difference here tonight. 16 out of 29 for the line for Mechanicsburg. For State College, 17 of 20. Three misses all night long. 85%. That'll absorb a lot of turnovers. So now Mechanicsburg in a press situation. State College would bound it. Nobody back from Mechanicsburg. Watch for the deep pass. Probably just going to try to get it possessed here. Sekunda says, throw it over the top to me. I'll take it. There goes Clark. Sekunda comes back. And he walked out of bounds. You can't thought, move your feet. He thought he was on the end line. Yep. You can't move your feet on a changeover. And so that's a call you will not see often, but it was the right call on Tommy Freiberg as he walked out of bounds. Ball kicked in bounds from Hobick. He was looking for Aliot. 124 to go, a 10-point lead for the Little Lions. It's a huge possession if Mechanicsburg has any chance at all. Boy, I like the way Tommy's played defense tonight. All the way it goes to Meyer, Dick. You gotta get something up there, you gotta get it quick. Alioff inside, Alioff. Turn around, hook for Alioff. And a timeout quickly for Bob Strickler. We'll keep it right here. 70 to 62 as Alioff, really, since he went out with that injury, has come back with a vengeance in this game. Maybe that should have happened in the first quarter. Let's go down to Todd McCall, who I think is now on good batteries. Todd, take it away. The battery is ticking now. I'm happy to, to say that. What a great game we've had here tonight, Charlie Fortney from Advanced Stoops. Charlie, both teams have played really tough right now, you know eight-point game, but Mechanicsburg's not out of it. Your thoughts? Well, you know, it's going to be a stretch, only 41 seconds, but just the way they are playing in this game, when you look at the lineups on both sides, the physicality and the height of State College, that division they played in, and the, the teams that they had to go through to get here, East, Carlisle, Harrisburg, one of the best Commonwealths we've seen in, in 10 years. Uh, for Mechanicsburg to even have the shot in this game, it's just hats off, hats off to every player that he put on that court and Coach Strickler pumping belief in those boys. The seniors of, of Scheib and Alioff, Hamick and these guys, uh, they'll never forget this moment. Let's see what happens here at the end. All right, Gary, back to you in the bench. Eight-point lead, State College. They've got the ball. Mechanicsburg has no one back, so they're ripe right now for throwing it deep. They're right, in- 17 to go. Here we go. They're encouraging that pass. Oh, nice call here. Little- little trickery. We've got a double team in the backcourt. Ellis has got to get it across the line. And he finally does it. Freiburg's got it. Freiburg underneath to his brother. They throw it back out. And now they're playing the clock. And Freiburg just waiting to get fouled. And Scheib comes out and fouls him. And now you got maybe the best free throw shooter down the stretch here. Other than maybe Secunda, Freiburg going to the line. Well, you feel comfortable if you're the coach at State College. Uh, Joe Walker with Freiburg on the line late in the game. Here's Freiburg up and in. Well, I'll tell you what, I like his game a lot. And he's a, a junior, 6'6 junior. His brother is a sophomore. I like they both play really well within themselves, I think. And yeah, he's, he's an excellent player. Here's Freiburg again. And now you can make it 19 out of 22 for the line tonight. There's Scheib up and in. There's a young man that's played his heart out tonight for Mechanicsburg. What a game. This is a tough task to foul State College to try to get the ball back because they don't miss foul shots. How about 14 points tonight for Scheib unofficially? Pretty balanced scoring from Mechanicsburg, actually. Very impressed. This young man has had himself a whale of an evening, Tommy Secunda. And he is absolute death with the line. Four out of four tonight. Looks very comfortable, doesn't he? About 27 points of this one right now. Yeah, that's, that's called an MVP performance. Oh, 28. Called. Perfect for the line. Five threes. He's been dynamite. Meyerdick, long look. Not going to go. Freiburg's got it. And the foul. And somewhat academic now. A 10-point lead. And now it sinks in. Mechanicsburg has given a heck of an effort tonight. See a lot of good sportsmanship going on out there right now. I like that Adam Lonslinger went over to uh, Ellis and said, hey, or uh, actually to Clark and said, hey, you know. I got to do this. Yeah. 
Uh, Freiburg back at the line again. Putting this one away for the Little Lions. Uh, 42 seconds away from being the mid pen 2017 champions. 20 out of 23 for the line tonight. I got you. They missed one. That? They're down to 83% now. People almost gasping here. They haven't missed all night. They're shy. Shy finding a way to try to go up. He's going to get a block called. I think it's going to be against Clark, and if it is, that'll be his fifth. It looked like Clark, Clark was trying to take a charge, but he was too deep. Scheib just slithering his way through again. And so Clark will exit the game. And Scheib heads back to the line. Scheib with a heroic effort here tonight. Alioff with 17. Scheib with 14. 18 from Holwick. I mean... That's their big three. There have been some huge efforts like Meredith. He came 12 through. Points. He came 14, through. 14 points for Meredith tonight. So, I mean, they've, they've been balanced scoring. They've hit you from every place. I thought offensively they played a pretty decent game. I thought so, too. And Alioff came in the second half. And see Bob Strickler over there kind of smiling, chatting with the official. His team gave a heck of an effort here tonight. They're going to both get ready for districts now. Although, for State College, you forget about this, they'll be playing in District 6. And, of course, You'll watch uh, Mechanicsburg head off into District 3 now. Let's head back down to Todd McCall again here. Todd, your thoughts about this game here as it's coming to an end right now, 34 seconds ago. Well, in the end, I just feel like the physical size and the shooting, the expertise shooting, the outside marksmanship by Seconda uh, did Mechanicsburg in. But, man, hats goes off the Wildcats. Their season's still young yet, but the district's coming up. They're Keystone champions. They got into this one, uh, and they played State College very tough tonight. State College fan? You probably love what you see with this hype going into uh, uh, district play. And, and now Bob? you're going to get a well-deserved curtain call for all the Mechanicsburg players coming off the floor. And their crowd had well-deserved. They played a heck of a game tonight. You see Bob Strickler giving each other a hug. He knows the effort they laid down here tonight. State College from three-point field goal range tonight. Check this out. Eight out of 16. So 85% from the line and 50% from three-point lands. This is a team that only shot 67 threes, made 67 threes all year long. So eight in a big game here tonight. They were up for the moment, weren't they? Sure were. Don't forget our OSS Health Post Game Report coming up after this. We'll have our Capital Region Insurance Agency play in the game, our better family of dealerships play in the game. You get a look downtown, and how about that? Pashinsky, who's worked hard tonight, hits his first three. That's good to see. Nine-point lead. I don't think State College is going to take another shot now. Clock runs down to 10 seconds. The State College Little Lions come in here tonight to Spartan Hall, and they're going to claim the 2017 Mid-10 Championship 77 to 68. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the awards ceremony and our OSS Health post-game report right after this. Did you know all electronics must be recycled? It's the law. But more importantly, it's the right thing to do. At the Recycling Center, Dolphin County residents can recycle older broken TVs, computers, cell phones, laptops, major appliances, even paper. The Recycling Center is conveniently located on Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It makes recycling fast, safe, and simple. Stop by the Dolphin County Recycling Center today and help us recycle the right way. Karen has 459 friends, but none of them made sure she got home okay. None of them suggested she skip the next drink, try a glass of water, or maybe just call it a night. Karen has 459 friends, but tonight, what she really needed was one good one. At Pizza Hut, our original pan dough rises fresh every day, making it crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. And now you can get our original pan as part of the $6.99 any deal. That's two medium pizzas with any toppings, any crust, any specialty for just $6.99 each, only at Pizza Hut. Welcome back to our OSS Health Post Game Report. It was a grinder here tonight, uh, Coach, and I'll tell you what, I thought that both teams really did themselves proud tonight. 
You can see here Mechanicsburg fighting back the whole way. There's our Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game. Watch Hobick down the lane, behind the back, up under left hand, and puts it home easily. Our play of the game here tonight. And, of course, our Brenner family of dealerships player of the game tonight, Tommy Secunda. What a show he put on, 28 points, with a whole lot of really good performances out there surrounding him tonight. But Tommy Secunda was the absolute player of the game. Well, early in the game, it was pretty ridiculous. He scored their first 10 points. said, I'm here. I'm here to play. We said it when I was talking to Charlie Fortney here. Every time he gets the ball, he's looking to score. I mean, this guy is the true idea of a gutter, but a smart gutter. He takes good shots. He makes good decisions. He shoots it downtown. He takes it inside. He knows when the big moment is in the game. He didn't miss a foul shot all night. He had five threes. He didn't really force anything either. He has a shooter's mentality, and he played within himself. This is a very fine basketball team. They really are, and they've got a lot of guys that are going to be back next year. So this might not be the first time you'll see him win the mid-pen. But I'll tell you what, they did a good job tonight. Mechanicsburg getting their silver medals right now. Uh, they played an outstanding game tonight. Never, ever laid down in the deck. You wouldn't expect that from Bob Strickler, coach team. But they had an outstanding evening. They go to 18-5 and five now as they headed to districts for State College. They headed to District 6 competition. They're 16-3, and three, and now they carry with them the title of mid pet champion. And we wish them both those teams the best of luck. It was a lot of fun tonight. Uh, we, it was a grinder, but offensively, there were some sparkling moments. There really were. A lot of great plays. I think the free throw line tonight was the undoing, obviously, for Mechanicsburg. They look back at that. Uh, they had their opportunities. They didn't have a lot of errors tonight. I don't think they reached seven turnovers. So they really played a good game tonight. But when it came to coming down the stretch, State College, it, it's like they made a habit of it all year long, winning these kinds of games and these kinds of moments. Yeah, you wonder how they beat Harrisburg, how they beat CD East, how they beat Carlisle, how they beat all the big teams in that division. Th they showed it here tonight. I want to check in with Todd McCall one final time. And, Todd, your final thoughts on this one tonight. Well, you know, again, hats off to the Wildcats, their family, their friends, their community played State College tough. But State College is a team that just won the Commonwealth Division and one of the toughest divisions throughout the years. You know, Carlisle, Harrisburg, and they were battle-tested, came in at night and did a little things. I think they converted from the foul line when they needed to. That made a difference. That's why they're champions tonight. Well, there you see Coach Joe Walker, a very proud coach tonight, putting the gold medals around the decks of his team members and. uh that's a proud moment. We've all been through it. Todd's been through it. You've been through it. I've been through it. I'll tell you what, there's no happier moment than when you can put the medal around someone's neck. We're just so happy for the kids that have worked so hard for you all year. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you look at this, and nobody can really know how much of a family it really is because these players, you know, after you get to this part of the season, the practice has become a grind. You start to shorten them up a little bit. You're trying to keep people fresh. You've been through the grinder of the Commonwealth, and now you stand tall here as the top dog in the mid-pen at the end of the day. And uh, Joe Walker and his team are to be commended for a great effort here tonight. we got a lot of people to thank here tonight. Chad Edwards and his great staff from Invicta. They did a fabulous job here again this evening, bringing you all the pictures. I want to thank Carolyn Fortney, Archie Smith Jr., of course, Charlie Fortney here tonight, kind of the founder of the feast. Todd McCall running the baseline all night long. Ryan Shipper, who does all of our prep, uh, he did a great job tonight. Jim Gallagher, stats supreme. He was passing them all night long. He does a fabulous job. And Jeff Thompson, great job. Always fun to work with you. We're going to be bringing you the district championship up on March 4th. We'll be telling you more about that a little bit later on. But thanks to all of you for watching here tonight as well. Again, the final score here tonight, 77 to 68. State College is your mid-pen champion. Thanks for watching High School Sports Live TV on ABC 27. serious out there. I know a lot of guys, you know, 
A lot of your boys are out there dying. It ain't no joke. The grave ain't no joke. My name is Joel Delgado. I've been here for about two years already. This program has really helped me through a lot. Home, out streets, basketball. Taught me how to be a better player, a better person. Helped me be a better uh, man at home. I help my parents around the house now. Less disrespect at home. Working, helping my mother pay bills. This program just built me to be a better person and a better man. The director, he came to me asking that I, that I want to come and join this program. And I, I seen him at, uh, at the Boys and Girls Club because I worked there. And he, had, he told me about the program and what it's worth. It's a great combination. Like, I like learning about new stuff. And basketball is the thing I do on the side. But it helps me on just communicating with each other. Because really, I love doing both things, learning, playing. But, I just want to become a great player and just have a great future. And there's a long way to go and I, I just got to stick with the, and it might be bad sides, bad, bad places and good places. I'm trying to take the good path. Met Gerald Jarman a few years ago and um, he got to uh, talking to me about Three Star Program, uh, asked me if I wanted to get involved and I uh, was very excited about the opportunity to uh, work with young men here in, in Harrisburg and hopefully make a difference, uh, make a positive uh, difference in their lives. I met uh, Coach Jarman and he asked me to be a part of the three-star program, so uh, we looked at that and of course you always try to clear your schedule for good things and uh, got involved and, and it's just a, a great opportunity for anyone to uh, impact lives. It's interesting, when I first heard about the program from the boys, they were talking about the mentoring, they were talking about just uh, being together with friends, they were talking about so many great things that they liked about the program. And it actually took a while before they said, oh, and by the way, we play basketball. I tell you, it's, it's great to see uh, the young men come in as we begin the mentoring sessions. It's great to see uh, just their development. It's great to be able to develop great relationships uh, with these young men and to see them grow and prosper. Well, a lot of things in the streets, just to help y'all out. Can you tell them about it? I, I got a lot of people, a lot of people that are here, I got into it, so I hope they learn something from here the way, same way I did last year. You see any changes in them? So far, yeah, a lot. Lots getting jobs, stopping a lot of things, becoming better people in here, better friends. It's helping a lot. Yeah, I'll be here next year. He got accepted to Duquesne and Bloomsburg. Bloomsburg on a full academic scholarship. We're here tonight at Roland, Roland School, um, Harrisburg School District. Uh, this is the high school program. Uh, this is our seventh year. This is the one that's really established. This is the program. Um, this is kind of like the, the mother of them all. 65 guys from the Harrisburg School District, teenagers, guys, you know, want to come out and play basketball and learn about life. Good thing is, you know, I don't know many, too many places in the city where you can go and get this many guys in one location, one place, from different areas in the city, uptown, uh, from the hill, uh, from out the south, all in one melting pot. Probably in another setting, in another environment, these guys will be at each other. Um, you know, it could be some friction, you know, so that's one of the things we're thankful for. You know, God has given us the grace to be able to do what we do. We're excited to be here. We have a great program. You're going to hear more things in the future, uh, great positive things about the young men in the city. I believe that with all my heart, uh, with all my soul. I believe that you're going to hear some positive things. There's a lot of negative things out on the media, and rightfully so. There's a lot of negative things happening in the city. But this is proof tonight, what you've heard and what you've seen, that there is some good that's happening. We want to highlight that. You know, it's a breath of fresh air to see and hear some of the testimonies, some of the positive reports we're getting, and you've seen it for yourself. So the best is yet to come, 
and I look forward to talking to you again sometime soon.